Hi, this is Normie from Knuckleballer Radio and Zombie Cast, and you're listening to one of my favorite shows on the Geeky Antics Network. Don't forget to check out the rest of the gang over at geekyantics.net. Warning, there might be rants and food ahead and possibly inappropriate behavior. Don't tell anybody, though. of a Scottish weed on whore and a pissy ex-video store clerk. Their ongoing mission is to set right the movie wrongs. They're going to need a bigger podcast. Well, hello, you're listening to the 365 Flix podcast. And it's episode 43. Yeah. How you doing, Kev? The boy has no name. Oh, the boy with no title has no name. Wow, shit. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm still, I'm still devastated. Haha, <laughs> it's, it's not good. Yeah. So can you I have it back? Uh, no. Can you just vacate it and give it back to me? No, I'm not going to do that. If it's vacated, it goes back to me, doesn't it? So you're, you're. For anybody who doesn't know, you're listening right now to your, <laughs> your reigning, defending Rating. three six five Rating. flicks. Champion, me. Till Brigger comes in and uh, challenges you for that. Shit. He's busy right now. He's he's going to be yeah. s- from his from his listener f- poop shoots for the top five later on. Yeah, he's clearly sleep deprived like a motherfucker. So clearly. yeah. <laughs> um. So yeah. Uh, on that little note. Yeah. I am the champion. You are the champion. And I would quite like you to hit my motherfucking music. Oh, let me cue it up. It's quite good being champion. Is it? I'm quite enjoying it. Oh, you <laughs> Would you like me to do that again? It's got to be all professional, hasn't it? So how are you enjoying your time as champion, Chris? I'm enjoying my champion time very, very well. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I've, got, I've got actually got I've got to apologise here because I have been in the pub before we started recording. I didn't go on the hardcore stuff, I didn't go on the prony or anything, but I have been on the pints. I thought that was just like a, a Nicolette graphic novice type thing. I it thought, was. I thought he oh, was I'm not going to stop playing Creed, never that. Uh, what's wrong with Creed? But I apologise if I, if I am a bit slavery, more slavery and sweary than normal. Yeah, I think you will be probably. I can sense it. I can sense the vibes off you. Most likely that there's going to be some slavery sweariness. Most likely. So don't piss me off and hit my music. I think I'm cute. I know I'm sexy. I've got the look. That drives and goes wild I've got the mood That really move I said chill Up and down there's fine I'm just a sexy boy I'm not your boy toy You do realise though When I do take the title back Because I will take the title back at some point mm-hmm. I get to be the guy that is The second time 365 Flicks champion You do you do, and I, you know, just to point out, for for a guy with that as his steam tune, that's got to be something under the trade descriptions act. How do you mean, a sexy boy? Well, you know, I wasn't going to say it, but you chose it, so no. I let you have it. But it's Shawn Michaels, it was either that or you. You probably would have been better with like, oh, you didn't know. Do 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 do. Oh, eh. I'm an ass man. No, that's no, no, that's connotations you don't want to mix up. So yeah. Anyway, bygones. So episode forty three. Forty three. That's a big one. And we're very, very excited. And also we've got uh just to start things off here, we've got a massive thank you to all of the new guys, all the new listeners. Yeah. Um we've seen a massive spike lately and it's fucking awesome. So it is thank awesome. you so bloody much to everybody who's start who's picked up this show. Um we can't even put it in words, especially right now after the pub, <laughs> of how much we appreciate you guys starting to yeah, man. listen to us. And um, we had a record month in June. You know, we were we were having a bit chat the other night, and I mm-hmm. said to you, "Who would who would have thunk it? Who would have thunk you it? You know, all those people 
listening to our shit. Shit is what it is. Ah, exactly. <laughs> and what it is, is shit. So, <laughs> thank you so bloody much, everybody. Uh, keep it up. Tell, spread the word. Tell a friend. Testify. Exactly. <laughs> it's a new day. Yes, it is. I do have a question for you. Oh, go on. Percentage-wise, right? How, uh, how many of those those millions and millions... It's not millions, but how many of those people who are listening do you think have stayed for a second episode? Hundred percent, hundred percent. I like that. I was going to say like thirty three and three thirds, and a and, and a third or about at, about three foot at the end of the month. <laughs> I love saying month. What are you after speaking about? <laughs> Why are we speaking like this right so now? So yeah, we are the three six five flicks podcast. You have just listened to us drivel on for a couple of minutes there about absolutely nothing whatsoever. Just want to pimp out the networks. You know, we we have a few networks fallen by the wayside, but we are still honorary mem honorary. No, that's not the word. No, we are members. We we are still members of the Tangent Bone Network, which is ran by Mark. Um, I just want to say it, Mark, you're doing a fantastic job over there. Love everything you're doing. And, you know, if you do want to fly us over for this Comic-Con that you've partnered up, I mean, we would do it, wouldn't we? Well, we'd complain about it. it we would complain because we we're, we're divas. We, we'd suck it up and we'd do it. Oh, we would, we would go, but, I mean, ugh, do I really want to leave the house? I would refuse to enjoy it, though. Would you refuse to enjoy it, or would you, like, just bitch about enjoying it? I think it would be like, oh, this is so awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, at the end of the day, if Tangent Mount's going to foot the bill to fly us out. Is that a thing? Well, he, I put it out there, and he did say, if if anybody, it would be us. Which is just another way of saying, fuck off, idiots. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, Mark, our tickets won't buy themselves. So. Yep, they won't, they won't, you know? And then we uh, we move over to uh, Big Dev, Big Sexy Dev, over at the uh, the Wicked Radio Network. As much as I like him, it really does feel like he's just trying to jibe me every turn. You didn't get that much of uh, much much of that on that episode, though. No, no, he was quite nice on that episode, but I think that's because he just would not tell us the truth about what was going on with that bird. Yeah, I think I think the damage was already done. Maybe yeah. he was gearing up to trying to wind you up like a motherfucker. I think but he was probably gonna. I think, you know. The damage was already done before we even dialed. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And then we are also on the Geeky Antics Network, ran by the fantastic Yoma, yeah, a.k.a. There Yogi was no Zilla. way I was getting that out tonight. <laughs> <laughs> and they're doing some great work over there. Apparently, um, the, I got a, a message on the Facebook earlier. Yoma's going offline for a couple of months. He's uh, Another one going offline? Uh, no, I think the network's going to carry on. He's He's got two people taking over, and uh, he's... Apparently he's losing his internet for like a couple of months. He's going dark. Yeah, he's going dark. He's going Jack Bauer for a little bit. Wow. Shit. But I'm sure about, I'm sure he'll come back stronger than ever because it's your mark. We are also on the We Be Geeks website. Uh, website network? Website. We Be Geeks PC, it's called. They are awesome. Um, everybody else who is on there, you need to listen to. But I do want to particularly pimp out one podcast Mm -hmm. it's a podcast that i've mentioned to you over the last couple of weeks i've totally fallen in love with listening to them because in a day when when i'm in in the delivery van doing my deliveries of course i'm out for like 10 hours so i need a good long podcast to Mm -hmm. get me through that weird science dc comics podcast they they are they review all the dc comics that come out each week it is literally seven and a half to eight hours of a podcast. These guys are absolute fucking troopers, to be fair. J- Jim and Eric, they, they go through every book that DC are putting out. They're reading them all. It's just, you know, even if you're not a DC fan, it's good to listen to because they tend to just talk a lot about food. Like, one of them's just, like, always trying to derail the other one with, like, food. And okay. it's cool. And he talks about his kids quite a bit, like, how he wants to hit them. Or, no, the other guy asked if, <laughs> if he did hit them. And anyway, I just wanted to let people know about Weird Science DC Comics. Have a listen to it. They are genuinely a couple of funny ass, funny ass guys. There's uh, another two lads that come on and they do like a history of comic books. They do a little section about forty minutes long, mm-hmm. and they take like a topic like the the Darwin Cook, the the comic book artist who died not long ago. They did like a little thing about him. They're brilliant. I just I want to put them out there because I love them. You know, on that note, I actually have. 
um, you have a new podcast I, on your docket. I know. No way. Yeah. I've actually, Where did you find time to do this? I've got a couple. Well, a the couple. I, the a first couple. The first one. Um, <laughs> well, the first one. I'm sure Jericho will be listening. But the first one I've, 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 I've taken <laughs> as up in Chris is, Jericho. Oh, yeah. No. <laughs> the first one I've taken up is talk is Jericho. He's not listening to this. I'm sure he is. Everybody is. If he is listening to this, he's probably sitting in his car like, you stupid idiot! <laughs> <laughs> That'd be awesome and be <laughs> Um No, um, I actually came across these guys on the Twitters. Oh, the Twitter sphere. Mm-hmm. Um, the first one, the podcast is called We Have a Hulk. Yes, yes, yep. I've seen, I've seen and that one. I love those guys. Are they they're, good? Yeah, they, they are very good. I'll have to they have are a very, listen. very good. Yeah, give them give them a go. Um they're only on episode twenty two. The episode twenty two was called DC Rebirth and Civil ah. War Two, so you would like this. Ah. Uh, but they are very, very good. And the other one is What Did I Just Watch? Yes. I've I've seen them on the on the the old Twitter as well. Yeah, and they they just talk about movies. Like us. Yeah. Although we technically don't really talk much about movies anymore well not right now no but we're going to get back into that yeah we're, we're going to make we're going to make amends for that because people see 365 flicks a, mo- a, a movie and tv podcast they expect us to talk about movies and tvs we do kind of we do just in a roundabout way but yeah i've i've, I've um, started listening to those guys uh and we have a hulk as a good name for a podcast this is so cool like, you're actually like you're actually actively finding podcasts now because normally I just say, have a listen to this, and then you... It's go, normally through you, yeah. to be fair. Uh, Which is why I wanted to give you the Holy was through you, and I've never forgiven you since. You've never forgiven me for that uh, one. And I, I do, I, do, I apologise every day for that one. Well, you damn well should. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I, I uh, discovered those guys on the Twitters, uh, mm-hmm. and I was speaking to them a, you know, a little bit and all that through direct messages and stuff. Awesome. And it's, it's pretty cool. You're, so, you're DMing people now. You hashtag left, right, and centre nowadays. Ah, I know. <laughs> you, you DM people. You've pretty much become a hipster. I am gonna. <laughs> I am gonna grow a pencil thin moustache. Ah, oh, that would be awesome. And it's gonna be like all twirly. Like if you do that, I am changing our logo to just, just a picture of you as a vaude villain. <laughs> so yeah, that's that's like the networks and some <laughs> podcasts that we want you to to be hip to, hip to, hip to be square. Yeah, just listen to them. Uh, but I also want to know. I want to let you know where you can find us. We're uh, we're on the iTunes, obviously. We're on the Stitchers. We're on the TuneIn Radio, the Player FM. We're on the Satchel app, which we are kind of contractually obligated through the Tangent Round to tell you about because they are partnered up with them, and that, that is a cracking app. I do use it. I'm not just bullshitting you here. I do use it. Uh, we're also on everything else. Just get on your your Android, your Windows phone, your. Yeah, yeah we're everywhere. We're like shit in a field. Just have a yeah. look for us on on Facebook, Three Six Five Flicks Podcast, and you can find us on the Twitters. Uh, you can the, the main page is at Three Six Five Flicks Pod, and you yep. can, is that right? Yeah, you can find me at. Are you actually going to throw out your Twitter handle here? What the hell is going on with you? I'm not going to because I can't remember what it is. You've changed. You you have changed at Chris. Three six five flicks. Yeah, at Chris three six yeah. five. Aye, there you go. Yeah, because I want to bring something up. Oh dear. When when you mention that, good pals of ours, the history of bad ideas. You've heard us mention them numerous times in other podcasts, but a couple of episodes back, they they had this little thing where they they do the listener feedback. They they stole the section from Graphic Novice. Mm-hmm. Uh, they do listener feedback. You must have sent them a question from your Twitter handle. Right. But you also sent them some listener feedback from your fi- from the Facebook page, our Facebook page. Right. And then we kind of got accused of double dipping. I just want people to know we ain't double dipping. This is all Chris. Chris is sending these questions to Hobie because I wouldn't lower myself. What question was it? I don't know. It was in the feedback. It double was, dipping? What it, does that mean? Double dipping. Like, you were using two different things to ask a question. You were double dipping. You've got two questions out there. Is that when? Is that when Jeff said they need to, or, or they've got too many Twitter handles or something like that? Yes. Jeff at Hobie Podcast. Yes. At History Bad to, Ideas I, I, Productions I, I, and at Blake Edwards Productions Hobie mm-hmm. cast. Yep. So double standards, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> Just wanted to bring it up. Like I ain't sending the questions in. It's all you, brother. But yeah, you can find us at anyway. the at the Facebook and the Twitters. Um we are also on YouTube, but we don't upload anything there anymore. But nice little segue there. If you are on the YouTube, check out our good pals at the Damp Night Productions. Very nice. Just type it in, Damp Night Productions, uh, Damp Night Comedy. 
they are there. They're a, an improv group. They were on our last episode, which is doing really well. People are really taken to this. They they seem to love the the, the improv guys. Well, they seem to be doing quite well. I was I was speaking to one of the lads, Dimples, who was on the show the other week, and he's yeah, they they seem to be be doing very well. They they apparently enjoyed being on the show, as and, they should. Well, I know everybody does. Yeah, um, David Prowse. Hopefully, they'll come back on again very soon. Definitely. They seem they seemed very very keen to talk about the room. Yes, and who we, isn't? We can't talk about the room and off. <laughs> you know. And keep your eyes out here, people, because they also mentioned, or, or Dimples last night mentioned to me, that they are going to be doing a little mini tour. Yes. Samplight on the road. Exactly. We're so on the road again. They are go- this is going to be later on in the year, later on 2016. We'll be keeping you up to date with what yep. they're going to be doing. Uh, we'll share it on the Facebooks and on the Twitters, because mm-hmm. that's what I do now. That is what you do. You are a hashtag and some bitch. I am. <laughs> and I love it. I just, I just embraced it. I think it's you know? great. I just, you, you just embrace your inner tweeter. <laughs> just relax into it and let it happen. Yeah. But yeah, they're going on tour. <laughs> they're going on tour. Um, <laughs> so they're going to be starting in Berwick. They're going to be doing Arik and and he, he mentioned a couple of other ones, but I had cider in my hand. So yeah, it takes precedent. Uh, exactly, exactly. But. Uh, they are going to be letting us know what the crack is, mm-hmm. and I did tell them that we will we will be going back to see them again. Oh, yeah, um, I'm in a heartbeat. The, I'm in there like swimwear. What he said on it like a car bonnet, all over that like a lampshade, all over that like white on rice. So to any, all, any of these working for you? To all of those people who have started following us, I apolo- <laughs> I apologise for the last half hour of this shit. <laughs> um, so let's get some news. Well, we get some news. Well, news first, news. first bit of news, you heard us talk about them two minutes ago. Uh, Brigger, just want to say congratulations to the oh, man. Oh, yeah, bless him. He's had his 10th child. Is it his 10th? Something like that, yeah. Yeah, something like that. He's had a boy, hasn't he? I saw the photo of the Bairn. I'm not right. sure if they said the name. For our American audience, Bairn is baby. I'm I sure, said, I'm sure oh, we've yeah. covered that before. Again, I've been to the pub. I yeah. apologise. So, uh, what I'll do is... I'll look that up on Facebook and I'll come back later. <laughs> but I just wanted to say massive congratulations. So glad everything went well and you know he's he's got a beautiful little baby boy. I'd like to think the baby's going to be called Kevin James Brigger. Kevin James Brigger. Kevin Br- Brigger Jr. Kevin Br- yep. Yeah. Kevin Brames. Kevin James Brigger Jr. Yes. We'll just go with that. Jesus Christ. We'll just go with that. We'll just say that's what you call it and now it's now it's a thing. So it's now it's, uh, you can't go back. <laughs> 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 Hashtag uh, Brigger's baby is Kevin James. No, oh, called, say that called Kevin that's, James. That's a low blow. So, Speaking of which, you know, <laughs> you've got a bear on the way in a minute. Oh, in a minute, yeah, so, in a heartbeat. You know, you said to me you've got a name for yeah. if, if it's if it's a girl. Yeah. So have you decided what you're going to call it as a boy yet? Well, this is a, a point of contention in our house right now. Um, I have a name. Mm-hmm. Um, she doesn't like it. Lindsay hates it and it probably won't happen what is it but the thing is it's one of those things like the the woman carries the baby for all that time and really we do nothing we just kind of put the baby there to be fair like our f our our effort into this child's existence is like a piss two and a half minutes to be fair you know it's two pumps and a squirt and then there's a baby there you know wow so it's sort of like the woman then has to carry the child, and the woman then has to go through the childbirth. And I know they've got epidurals nowadays, but, you know, it takes away the pain and stuff. But they still have to do it. So when it comes to trying to force a name upon her, I just can't do it. She won't let me. What's the name? Is it Anakin? I want to call it Anakin. You want to call it Anakin? I want to call it Anakin. I think you should call it Anakin. I want to call it Jar Jar, Palpatine. You've taken that too far. Grievous, Darth. Kev. We do have a name, and I'm not, I'm not 100% sold on it. Just going to throw it out there. Christopher has a damn fine name. <laughs> it's a damn strong name, too. <laughs> but no, it's not going to happen. Anyway. So, from births to deaths. Yep. It's been another fucking crap week. <sighs> you know, another one. Another <laughs> one. <laughs> I mean, we spoke about Anton Yelchin on the last episode. We did, and we, we were both fucking gutted about this. Carolina Hearn. Carolina Hearnley. Um I don't know if I don't know if the Americans will know who this woman Everybody is or knows. was. Uh, uh, she, I mean, she she's uh, 
she's a very famous comedian in in the UK. Uh, she wrote and starred in the Royal Family. I'm yep. sure that must have translated over to America. I they think... probably tried to remake it and fail. That's what they do. <laughs> but the woman was a comedic genius. And the... 52 years old, she died of the cancer. Yeah. And it's another a fucking one, goddamn one. shame. It is. It really is. Um, this this one really kind of took me by surprise, if I'm honest. I think if, if the American, you'd probably go with Dame Edna Everidge, wouldn't you? She played her, didn't she? No, oh. no, 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 no. Who's the old woman she played? Mrs. Merton. Mrs. Merton. You'd probably go with her. Surely they'd know her. That was like a, uh, it was like a sort of Alan Partridge talk yeah. show. No, I would think the royal family will have translated. American listeners, I don't know. You're out there. Have you heard of Carolina Hearn? Have you heard of the royal family? Let us know. Yeah, and also we had two others. We had two directors who died this week as well. We had uh, Michael. I'm, I'm going to fuck this one up. Up to you, Michael. It's either Semino or Camino. I'm going to go with Semino. He directed Deer Hunter, the old uh, oh, Robert right. De Niro movie. Right. Uh, 77 years old. He passed this week. And Robin Hardy, who directed the original Wicker Man movie. He passed away this week at 86. More bothered about Carolina Hearn, yeah. if I'm honest. <laughs> I mean, Deer Hunter and the Wicker Man are two damn classic movies, but Carolina Hearn, man, she was fucking awesome. I mean, you know, it's, it's a shame the guys have died. But yeah, it's Carolina Hearn. Yeah. And as of late, you could hear her like every other week on Gogglebox. She was like the voice of Gogglebox. Oh God, was she? Yeah, and mm. then obviously she disappeared because her voice was well, she was on her way, wasn't she? Anyway, so again, 2016. Thank you very much. Um, I'm not going to say cheers to you, you big bastard. But 2016 is a bastard. It's not been good. I mean, I was thinking at the start of the year because we didn't do very well in the um, the turn of the year uh, episode. If you want to go back and listen to that, you can. But we we sort of did like people who had died last year. I ain't doing it at the end of this year. We'll be there all night. I think that would be like a weird science DC Comics podcast in itself. It would be like a full seven and a half hours. You know, at at one point, I I get Sky News Mm -hmm. updates to my phone. At one point, it was like, oh God, who's dead now? (laughs) Yeah, yeah. It's shit. Like, it is. You know, I mean, there was the week of, I think it was the week of Bowie. Yeah. And then there was a couple with Bowie. Th- there was then. a lot in that week. Yeah, was it not Prince and, uh, within the same week? I or? think Prince was the next week. Oh, it was Victoria Wood and, the, and Bowie in the it same week? Could have been Victoria Wood. Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh for fuck's sake, man. It's crazy. It's just crazy. Fuck off 2016. Yeah, just. I, I can't wait for, we, for you to be over. Pretty much because we'll get to see Rogue One in December, but you know. <laughs> but I can't wait for 2016 just to be done. Because yeah. all this death is just shit. It is giving us stuff to talk about on the podcast, but. I don't want to be talking about that. No. So let's just crack on with the news. Welcome to the Wicked Radio Network. And my my first little bit of news is um, good old Kev Smith. Kevin Smith Hmm. was in London last week for the um, the advanced premiere of Yoga Hoses, his new movie, um, with his daughter in it, and Johnny Depp's daughter. He's done an interview, I think it was on Den of Geek, I read the interview, and basically he was given hints about Mallrats 2, which okay. is now which is now going to be a 10-part, half-hour episode series that he's hoping to have on Netflix or Hulu or some streaming site. Uh. Can we just say Kevin Smith's done? Yeah. I'm kind of not even interested in this yoga hoses. I still... I, I hadn't heard of it until you said it just now, to be <laughs> honest with you. I still love Kevin Smith. I still think he's a good director, but... I mean, come on, what's going on? What is going on? This is the man who gave us Clerks, gave us Dogma, gave us Jane Silent Bob Strikes Back. He's going to put more Rats 2 on, as a TV series? But why is he doing more Rats 2? Why is he doing Clerks fucking 4 or 5 I, or whatever You know what it is? I, w- I want to see Clerks 3. I do want to see Clerks 3. More Rats 2, I, w- I can't say I was that fussed about seeing that. But now that it's going to be a TV series, I think I'm even less fussed. You know, I d- it, mm, when a director starts doing that kind of thing, it, on one hand you could say, you know what, that's his love, that's his labour of love, yeah. that he wanted to go back to the characters and the story and carry on that. But you could also say, well, have you got no more ideas left? Well, he's he, he's dipping into the well, is what he's doing. And to be fair, Yoga Hoses is a spin-off of Tusk, which... Oh, Jesus Christ. You know, critically 
Uh, I've never seen Tusk, but you've told me about it, and no. As I've said to you, every time we talk about Tusk, I've said this countless times. I've said it countless times to many people. The first hour and ten minutes of Tusk is fantastic. It's Michael Parks and Justin Long just kind of back and forth. Michael Parks doing what Michael Parks does. It's just an amazing actor. Fucking d- delivers dialogue like, you know, just like you wouldn't believe. Yeah. He turns him into a walrus and the movie goes to shit. Uh, sounds really, really trippy. Yeah. It's not even trippy. It's just fucking weird. You will sit there and just be like, okay. And even I, by the end of it, I was like, I'm out. I am done. This is, I'm done. You've taken Michael Parks and turned him into a bit of a joke, to be fair. And like I say, I still think Michael Parks is a phenomenal, phenomenal actor. Having said that, Kevin Smith is doing fantastically wonderful things for the podcast universe, so we can't hate him. I do, I do still love the guy. Well, uh, I do, I do still I like hate him. Yet. It's Kevin Smith, you know. Come on, but he is a man amongst men. You know, he's amazing. He's amazing. More works too doesn't really perk my interest. Exactly, though. and I just want to bring that up. But I, I like the fact that he was in London and he didn't, you know, jump on the train and come up for a cup of coffee or anything. Ignorant. What was that all about? Mm-hmm. You know, surely he knows who we are. She's bloody rude. Yep, thank you. Yep. I thought that as well, what to bring up. <laughs> so, do you have anything? I do, well, kind of. I've been in the pub. Um, <laughs> the, one of the ones that perked my interest was uh, Draco Malfoy. Oh, yes. Tom Felton. Tom Felton. Tin, 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 Tom Felton and Tom tin, 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 Felton. Yep. It's going to be on Arrow? No. Flash? Yes. <laughs> All right, so that really perked your interest. Yeah, um, Tom Felton is uh, joining Flash as a series regular. Yep. Um, Oh, it's a series regular? Yep. All right, so it's not going to be like Edge. No, it's not going to be like Edge. As far as I I did see that uh, Cody Rhodes is going to be on there, on Arrow. I'm quite quite excited. That's where I went wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Cody Rhodes, Arrow, Tom Felton, Flash. Flash. Yes. You know, the one with Grant Gustin. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah, um, apparently he's he's going to be a series regular. He's coming in at like episode three, I want to say he's coming in. He's going to be a fellow CSI uh, colleague of Barry's. And they're saying that the big thing about him is that he's going to be one of the only people in the show who doesn't know who Barry actually is. Called Julian Dawn. That's, that's the name he's been given. One article I read said that he's a completely original character for the TV show. However, I did read another article that pretty much didn't clarify that so he's either an original and they've created him or he's he's just Draco Malfoy question is is he bad or is he going to be good is he going to be a bent copper okay <laughs> Chris Chris um, is sitting here smiling so what I will say for anybody who isn't from Britain but when I say bent copper I don't mean he's a, a gay I mean he's on the take wow <laughs> that didn't work either <laughs> so yeah what, what do you have to say about Draco Malfoy being in Flash, Christopher? Sure, why not, Kevin? When I talk like this, this is where the edit comes in. Yep. <laughs> uh, yeah, why not? I mean, you know, he's a good little actor. Yeah. He deserves to be on something. He kind of, I, I guess, you know, Harry Potter ended, what, I don't know, four or five years ago? Yeah. Something like that. He was in... He did he, the Planet of Apes movie. Yeah. Yeah, he did that. But he was in it for about 30 seconds. And yeah. He was, and he was a bastard. playing a bastard, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, why not? I mean... Get him in there, make him a good guy, give him some stuff to work with. We also had some Arrow news. Obviously, Cody Rhodes is mm-hmm. uh, going into Arrow. I didn't read much about on that one, because I'm assuming it's just like relatively new, but apparently Stephen Amell has championed this. I feel it was just today. Was it just today? I think it was, think it was just today. Well, you know, I think Amell, does, does, like, he, he had to, to get him in there, because... He got him. He got him a fight at. Uh, it wasn't WrestleMania, was it? SummerSlam. SummerSlam. He got him a fight at SummerSlam. So there you go. Repay your old debts and stuff. Mm-hmm. But good to see that. Good to see Cody Rhodes is going to have something to do. But the other thing was uh, Carly Pope. I haven't seen her in anything else, but she's now joined Arrow. But the big thing about this is that she is playing a Green Lantern character from the comic books. Oh. So the fanboys are losing their fucking minds. It's like, oh my god! Apparently, in Green Lantern, she plays Hal. She is Hal Jordan's sister-in-law. Okay, and she's going to be in Arrow, adding fuel to the fire that Green Lantern's on his way to the CW. Because I mean, Diggle's going to come back as Green Lantern, basically. Yeah, tough Diggle. Yeah, tough Diggle. Yeah, but uh, Carly Pope, she's going to be playing a character called Susan Williams, who is a reporter 
at Coast City, which I think is Green Lanterns City, obviously. I think that's right, yep. Yeah. Yep. But yeah, I mean, that, that's pretty cool. It's pretty cool that um, you're going to get a, a Green Lantern-centric character coming into Arrow. I think that's pretty cool. Sure. Do you like that? Yeah. Why yeah. not? Why not? <laughs> Why not? So Preacher, because we're kind of on the comic book uh, angle here. Preacher, mm-hmm. second series already. Wow, really? An, an extended second series of 13 episodes. How do we feel about that? I mean, you've I think you've watched more of it than I have. Have you watched I it I haven't watched this week's one yet. Right. But other than that, yeah. Uh, I'm loving the comic book and I'm loving the TV show. So is this a given for you? Is it obviously going to get a second series? Oh, or? Yeah, of course it yeah. is. Plus it's AMC and they tend to at least give their series, you know, one, two, maybe three series. What I will say is there's a lot more fucked up shit goes on in the comic book that right. they, could possibly, they couldn't possibly get away with in the TV show. Well, on our fantastic episode that we did with Snake Oil Comics, because we guessed it on their episode, you can go and look for that. I'm not going to tell you which one it is. Just look for it. Uh, he did mention that, and he asked you if you thought they were going to get away with some of the stuff in the books, and you're saying no? Like, it's just It's no. not there? They're not even trying it? Well, no. 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 <laughs> Uh, I'll, once I finish the the first book, I'll give you to read because shit. Is it mental? Yep. Cheers. Yep. I look forward to reading that. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have anything else? No. I've got a couple more things. On you. So the EU referendum happened. Oh dear. I know what you're thinking. Where is he going with this? Trust me, it's it's relevant to the podcast and it's not political. Kind of is a little bit. So it turns out that there was a little-known Twitter beef going on on uh, on the Twitters, obviously, because I called it Twitter beef, with um, some PMs or MPs, MPs, yeah, MPs from uh, Parliament and stuff like that, and they were having Twitter beef with none other than Lindsay Lohan, who was a very staunch Remain uh, advocate for the, the referendum. She basically made some statement on Twitter in one of her tweets uh, about... Who knows where Kettering is anyway? Now, I only bring this up because you know that I am a Kettering Town football fan. Yes, you are. I have a strip. Well, I have a shirt to prove it. I wouldn't say I go to Kettering Town games all the time, but, you know. You have a shirt? I've got a shirt. I've got I've got a Kettering Town top. Have you? Yeah, because we tried to buy it off the store, but you couldn't actually buy it off the store online. So Lindsay's mum... Did had, they have to send a postal order? She had to, like, phone <laughs> the club... On the phone, you know, nobody makes orders over the phone nowadays. And she phoned the the club itself, phoned the reception, and got a strip sent up to me. Well, I'm saying strip; it's a shirt. That's all it is. But yes, yeah, it's, it's the home top, and I wear it with pride. I used to wear it when I played football back when I played football before I got fat and stuff. I've got a strip, so there you go. But anyway, 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 I digress. I yep. digress. Yep, yep, yep. So Lindsay Lohan got a big fat coke nose into the business of the referendum. <laughs> allegedly. Allegedly, sorry, yep, allegedly. And now uh, she has been challenged to come to Kettering to turn on the Christmas lights. Uh, yeah, I read that. And on Twitter, she has agreed to do so. <laughs> I don't know why I bring this up. I just thought it was news and noteworthy. Are we Geordie Shore now? We could be, we could be. Two guys in a, in a shed. We must certainly, well. <laughs> <laughs> on the Lambruscos. Be fine, be fine. But yeah, Lindsay Lohan's coming to... Uh, I've not been in the pub for that long. <laughs> Lindsay Lohan's coming to a Northampton Shire town of Kettering. Brilliant. To turn on the Christmas lights. Brilliant. i got to be honest with you. If I knew where Kettering was, I'd go. And I'd, I'd see this. Cause, Why? Because it'll be a train wreck. Well, she'll be like, smart to have her tits or whatever. And Probably, allegedly. But yeah, like she's... Kissing she's, on the stage. She's coming all, over you know, to turn the lights on. Yeah. yeah. Flinging her shit in the crowd, and <laughs> allegedly... <laughs> Allegedly. So yeah, some uh, some movies got announced. Some movies got announced right. um, for release dates. Wreck It Ralph Two is coming. Disney must have did this massive, huge thing about um, they were going to make a big announcement on the uh, the Facebook and the Twitter and all this. And the big announcement ended up being that Wreck It Ralph Two is coming. Now I might just be one of these people who reads too much into certain articles, but I'm sure we got told this months ago. I'm sure it was always going to happen. I wasn't really Wreck It Ralph Two. Looking for that. But I mean, I enjoy, I've seen Wreck It Ralph. I enjoyed it. It was okay. Well, we're getting a second one. Okay. <laughs> Pacific Rim 2, Ugh, 2018. So... Still coming. Underworld 5. Underworld 5. Underworld 5. Colon... They're still making those movies. Yep. Underworld 5. Colonoscopy. Blood Wars. Because that's what that's going to be like watching that movie. So I just went with it. 
Tintin Two still happening? Is it? Is it still? What's her name? No. Well, I don't know because did Rona Mitra? It was Kate Beckinsale, and then I'm sure Rona Mitra came in at one point, or did she just play her daughter? Tell us on Twitter. Let us know. I've I've only seen. I think I saw the first two. The first two. Is that all you've seen? Wow. I think that's pretty much all I've seen. Like when I, I when enjoyed I, the first one. When the I say all I've good. seen, I mean like all the way through. Didn't it have Bill Nye in it. Yes, I Bill Nye was in it. Well, he yeah, he'll, he'll do anything. He's all right. Yeah. He's, he's all right. He will do anything though. So yeah, I just wanted to get that out. Uh, Tintin Two is uh, apparently still on the cards because the first one did so fucking well. It was all right. It wasn't. It was terrible. It was all right. Have you seen what is going on with the Batman versus Superman Ultimate Edition? No. Critics. Uh, a lot of critics and a lot of the people who went to see it in the cinema, which wasn't very many people, evidently, and the people who took to Twitter to lambast the movie are now turning around after having seen the digital copy, because it's been released digitally, or it leaked, or it's been released digitally, I think, uh, of Batman vs Superman Ultimate Cut, and they are apologising to Zack Snyder. Huh. Pe- people are actually taken to Twitter to apologise to Zack Snyder. Because they are now realising that the studio may have got in and said you need to cut half an hour out. The half an hour they did cut out, which is Zack Snyder's vision of the original movie, people are really loving the extended edition. And mm. and it's it's changing people's minds. It's not out yet, though. It, like, it's be, I don't know if it's been leaked or if it was released on digital, because we get it on Blu-ray, it's like... July the 25th? Yeah, uh, 29th, I think. 29th. I've got it pre-ordered. So we get it on Blu-ray July the 29th, but because we're all impatient bastards, it's at, I don't know if it's been leaked or if it's been um, put online, as in like iTunes kind of thing, but apparently you can, you can get it, and people have been watching it, because Mr. Sunday Movies did a video about it on the YouTube. He apparently quite adored it. He didn't say that it fixed everything, but he said it fixed a lot, because I watched the video. Um, there's videos all over, people reviewing them, people are reviewing them on their, their websites and all that, and a lot of people seem to be saying that it fixes a lot of the issues. Why did Zack Snyder, why did Warner Brothers not release this in mm. the cinema? Now, I do tend to think that Warner Brothers didn't really want to hedge their bets on people sitting for a three-hour movie. I, I mean, that's all you could you say. You know what, fuck that, I would have sat for that. Of course you would. I think everybody would It's have. only half an hour, and you've got... Batman and Superman on the screen together. Exactly. I would have sat for that. But there seems to be a lot of people coming forward and saying, you know, it is, it's a it's a much better movie. It fixes a lot of the flaws. Not everything. What I'm seeing, uh, don't get me wrong, I'm not going to sit here and say, it fixes everything. Because there'll be somebody out there who'll attack me for saying that. Oh, the ones who... If the, the thing was still in the water for six months after the after the events of the first movie. Ah, that guy. That kind of thing. That guy, yeah. Yeah, so I, I was happy to see that. I've been happy to see that people are kind of coming around a little bit. And Warner Brothers, some people are calling it a dick move. But I, I quite like this. If it is a dick move, I like it. If it isn't, I love it. But they invited, did you see that they invited a dose of bloggers and YouTubers to the set of the Justice League? Mostly people who panned the movie, like, um, you know, the guys at Collider. Uh, you know Collider, the John, uh-huh. John Campier. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I like John Campier. I'll throw his name out there. But uh, they, they invited a lot of them to, um, I think it was over here, I think it was London, to the, the set of Justice League to show them what they were doing. Right. Now, in my head... This is one of those things that you could take either way. It could be like, look, we're listening, we're changing things, look what we're doing, go out and spread the word. Or it could be like, yeah, we're going to invite you over here, all comped, say something shit about the movie now. (laughs) You know, it could be either way. And either way, I love it. I think it's brilliant. If it is that, I love it a bit more. That's quite a good move. It is a good move. It could be a dick move, but I like it. It could be their way of like, come out here, we'll give you some free eats. Uh, you can go and speak to Gal Gadot, you can go and speak to Cavill on set and all that, and you can do this, you can do that, you can watch us film scenes, whoa, because that's fucking awesome, you know, because a film like that without green screen is going to look fucking great. So, you know... (laughs) Yeah, that's a good point. (coughs) But but how do you then turn around and slam that movie? If they invite you to the set and give you all that fucking, all that good day out and all that, and then how how do you go back to your website and be like, oh, they took us to the set, it was fucking shit. You can't do that, can you? You're going to be a little bit more like, oh, they took us to the set. I liked a lot of what I was seeing. Um, No, I kind of disagree with you there. Yeah? 
their their job well you would <laughs> hope you would hope that their job is to be impartial and to an impartial well yes review of the yeah. movie well yes so just because somebody's given me a sausage roll eh, <laughs> doesn't mean to say I'm going to like their movie <laughs> <laughs> you would hope that but then some of these reviews were written before the movie came out so or they could just say well the sausage rolls were nice, but <laughs> fuck the movie. <laughs> Thanks for the sausage rolls. <laughs> Could you have done with some more tomato sauce? <laughs> nah, like, I think it's... Um, either way, it's a good move on uh, on Warner Brothers. I like it. I like it a lot. Don't quite know how to take it, but I like it a lot. I think it's it's great. But from what people have been saying coming off the set, the likes of uh, Devin Faraci was a big... Um, our pals, the jock and nerd, love Devin Faraci. And he was a big. He was the guy that wrote the article, basically. Um, why was the world engine still there in the sea and all that? And he, he nitpicked the film to fuck like way more than anybody ever should have. But he was a big advocate of how shit the movie was. So he was one of the guys who was invited, you know. And it's it shows you who they invited. It shows you like it's, it's fantastic. I think it was just like you know their names on the back of the seats and then <laughs> in brackets. <laughs> twat <laughs> in brackets picky fuck in brackets it was just in the water alright he didn't have time to pick it up I ran out of paper <laughs> it was in the water because Zach said it looked fucking coo and I would I would have gone for a swim in there yeah I would love to nice. that. I would love that really? so, it's like you see the was it that that ocean that is just pure blue that you can see the, yeah, the ocean floor it looked nice definitely man I'd go you for know, it I'd go for it and you get a bit of metal tan and Whatever. and Warner Brothers were handing out sausage rolls so exactly by all accounts with extra tomato sauce <laughs> I just I just thought I'd, allegedly when, when I read about this I quite I liked it I, I thought I did kind of sit there and applaud Warner Brothers a little bit I was sort of like wow like you're either incredibly fucking stupid or you're incredibly happy with what's coming like, Hopefully it's that. I hope it is that. and Because you wouldn't invite a dose of people who already hated the last movie to the set unless you were happy with what they what you're doing. I hope that they've... I just... I hope they've got their, you know, their sales and gear and correcting whatever sort of in- errors. Yeah. You know, whether it's, whether it's, you know, real errors or errors that aren't really there but people think they are, <laughs> you know. People think they are, yeah. You know. Yeah. No, I, d- I just want to bring up because I can't talk about Batman enough. I can't talk about what Zack Snyder's doing enough. I still think the man's the right man for the job. I do like the fact that Jeff Johns is now in there to kind of oversee. I do like the fact that Ben Affleck seems to be taking a much bigger role. Yeah, I'm just, I'm, just, I'm happy. <laughs> I'm happy to see where it's going. They do seem like they're getting their shit together, and uh, I can't wait to see Wonder Woman and bring on the Justice League. Yep, I'm looking forward to the Wonder Woman movie. Uh, Woman movie. Wonder Woman booby. It would have been better if you said booby. Yeah, no. <laughs> but you said booby. Yeah, sharp, I've beaten the pop. <laughs> really? I, I didn't know that. Sharp. <laughs> anyway. So. So, would you... That's pretty much all I've got for the news. So, would you like to move on to uh, what's next? Hey, everybody. This is Jason. And Jeff. And Blake. And we're the History of Bad Ideas podcast. And if you like hearing uh, geeks talk about Fisto from He-Man... Or zombies, or dragons, or zombie dragons? I was given copy to read, but it's a piece of crap. So if you just like any geek or any fun stuff, just listen. We drop every Wednesday on iTunes, Stitcher, Tangent Bound Network, or WeBeGeeksPC.com. Oh god, I'm out of here. And remember to wear a coat. Yeah, we're going kind to of have a bit crack about uh, what, what have you been watching lately? What have we been watching lately? What have you done for me lately? Yeah. So basically, uh, I texted you a couple of nights ago. We review movies when we go to the cinema and stuff. But we kind of sort of strayed away a little bit. So I asked, can we... I think the thing, the problem is there's too many fucking TV shows out there that I'm kind of just watching constant TV. So movies have taken a bit of a back burner. So I basically said to you, can we make a bit more of an effort to watch some movies? Mm-hmm. And have you watched anything of any interest to you as of late? I have. <laughs> so I've seen two movies over the last couple of weeks. Woo! Ah! Two movies! Yeah! 
the new movies. You watch the movies. Just, just let's talk about. Uh, okay, it. let's so, talk about. Yeah, it. I've seen, I've seen a couple of movies over the last couple of, of the last couple of weeks. Um, the first one was The Conjuring Two. Yeah, I'm hearing a lot about this. I fucking loved it. I listened to the Epic Film guys. Have you been listening to them? Yep. They gave that a fantastic review. It, like, I'm pretty sure the words like best horror movie of the last decades or something was thrown in there. Yeah, I would, I would, I would say that's up there. Is it as good as the first one? I liked the first one. It did, yes. It got grief. It did get grief, but I liked it. Fuck grief. No, um, <laughs> I yeah, yeah, I loved the movie. I was expect, uh, you know, I wasn't sure what to expect because a few a few months ago or whatever it was on Sky Atlantic here in the UK, uh, there was a TV series like a drama uh, with Timothy Spall about this about the Enfield oh, haunting. Yeah. Oh, because it's um, about that, yeah, yeah. Aye. So it starts off in Amity. Amity. Ah. No, that's just Am- Amityville. <laughs> Manly Hill in Amityville. It's Eminem's home. Crack on. Okay. Uh, it starts off there, and then it kind of it goes into London to the Enfield Taunton. Is there a load of cockneys? Yeah. Is that, oh my governor? Yeah. So that's how we talk. Apples and pears. And, yeah, you know, that's how we talk, that. to be fair. Yeah. Everybody back? Is it? Is it Patrick Wilson? In it, we'll just go with that. Norma Bates and Norma Bates, uh, it is her, isn't it? Yeah, from Bates Motel. Yeah, uh, well, that was a fantastic review. Thank you. Just, just, just short and sweet. I like it. Yeah, uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't want to spoil anything. I mean, yeah, that's, and also, that's I can't really remember anything that happens right now. That's that's the thing. We There's really... a lot of good scares, good performances from the cast, um, especially like the, the two, like the little girl who is possessed. Cool. Um, she puts in a really good performance, um, and yeah, just give it a watch. And uh, you know, if you like that kind of, if you like that kind of thing, give it a watch. I really enjoyed it. On a side note, if you do get to watch, if you do have a chance to watch the mini series that the British did, the the Enfield Haunting, wasn't it? Yeah. With with Timothy Spall. If you get a chance to watch it, watch it because it was eerie as shit. And it's Timothy Spall. And it's Timothy Spall. It, it was eerie as shit though. Like I, I wasn't that. I, that was yeah. I remember like the second episode ended, and I kind of just sat and went, "Oh my god." There was a bit. They kind of they kind of re- repeated it in the movie because yeah. it's based on a true story. It yeah. is actually based on a true story. Is it based on a true story? As in the, uh, the Warrens were actually there though. Yes, they were. Were they actually there? Because yeah. I don't remember them in the Enfield Haunt. The guy was. was the guy. I think. He was right. The Conjuring Two was good. Right and. You know, I would give it a solid four out of five stars. Four out of five stars? That's yeah. that's pretty solid. Yeah. That is a solid rating. Well, you know, from nerd on nerd, four, four fucking... <laughs> four out of... So, four, so four you, rate, five. You, you rate this movie as high as Turbo Kid? I do love nerd on nerd. If, if you get a chance to listen to two other cheeky chaps other than ourselves, please partake in nerd on nerd. They are a great podcast. Except that. And they, they gave it to a whole kid That rating was 5. fucking ridiculous. Anyway. It's, it's a rating it deserved. So how about you? I had the chance, per chance, the chance, to see Green Room. Have you seen anything about Green Room? No. It is a movie that stars the late, great Anton Yelchin. Yeah. It was one of his last movies. It came out recently. Uh, it's literally about um, like a sort of fading rock group who are out on the road doing the Dark Knight uh, improv thing, and they, they end up in, like, a, a bar, kind of doing, like, a gig. And the green room, apparently, I don't know anything about this because I don't know fuck all about rock music or rock bands or that life. But the green room is where the band sit before they go in to, to play the music, and they go in, and the, the bar's full of, like, skinheads and stuff. And it all goes to fuck from there. It's pretty much like a, a thrillery. I don't want to say it's a horror because I don't. I didn't feel it was a horror. It's more thrillery than right. anything else. But Patrick Stewart's in it as well. Oh, you can't go wrong. And he plays an absolute psychotic bastard. Does he say I've already seen everything? That would be awesome, but no. Or make it so. Oh, I really want him to say that in everything. I've already, he doesn't. I've already seen it. He is, um. He's a bit maniacal. He's uh, he's very not Xavier at all. Right. Uh, by that I mean he's walking, but <laughs> <laughs> it was you know what it is though. Like for a split second, and I know we both watch like TNG and all that. We've seen Patrick Stewart in other things, but to see Patrick Stewart up on his feet now is a bit strange. It's kind of like why is Patrick Stewart walking? Like I thought he was a cripple. He's not. 
It's just X Men. You know, it's it's acting. You, did you think he'd done like a Daniel Day Lewis? Oh, and he'd, he'd <laughs> oh, yes, <laughs> he he was Xavier, so he like battered his legs in like misery. Yeah, pretty much. That's what yep. I thought. Okay, That's what I enough. thought. But yeah, the green room with Anton Yelchin. It's a solid movie. I don't think I'd go above a three. To be honest, it just is what it is. Uh, it's quite. It's got some jumpy moments, uh, but it is mostly just a thriller. Quite a young cast. Quite a young, decent cast. And Patrick Stewart you can't go wrong. So I give that a three. Okay. Did you have any other movies? I did. I had another one. What was it? The Shallows. What like the paddling pool? Right. No. That'd be cool, though, wouldn't it? Had a big swimmy sharky thing in it. <laughs> so Jaws. No, it's not Jaws. I have. I've, I've seen. I've seen about this. This looks like an alright movie, but it has Blake Lively in it, doesn't it? Yeah. So why would you watch that? Any good? It was very, very good. As good as Open Water. It was better than Open Water. Do you remember Open Water? Yes. Did you watch Open Water? Yes. Was it as good as Open Water? No. <laughs> 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 so what happens? <laughs> What happens in okay. the shallows? Um, so she's. <laughs> um, it starts off. She's going to uh, like a gorgeous, beautiful, picturesque beach, which is she's got and she's got photos. This is where her mum went when she got when she was. I was going to say diagnosed with being pregnant, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that's a shit diagnosis. You don't want that shit. <laughs> Fucking hell! Um, I've been to the pub, and so that's <laughs> where her mum. Became pregnant with her. She went to that beach to, and she was a surfer. She a surfer <clears throat> chick from Texas, apparently. Texas. That's a thing. Um, yeah, so it starts... It, she, she's on her way to the beach and, yeah, she's... she's Well, she's going there to experience the beach. Right. And to go surfing and stuff. As you do at the beach with yep. a surfboard. Yep, I've never done that. No? No. Never seen um, Point Break and just thought, I need to go and surf. No, I would I would break everything in my body if I tried to do something. Yeah, so would I. Be fun though. Yeah, no. So yeah, and then well, there is like a carcass of a whale, and she swims too close to it. There's a great white shark, and then shenanigans. Shenanigans. Don't tell me it's one of those. I'm going to sit on a rock for all those, this whole movie. <laughs> <laughs> it's not one of them, is it? That is that is the movie, <laughs> right? So it's very very good. Blake Lively is fucking brilliant in it. I have heard good things. I've heard very um, good things about that film. You know, it's a CGI shark. Most most of it mm-hmm. is just the fin and like the sort of the shadow of of yeah. the shark swimming past her and stuff like that. Um, it is it's is a very good movie. It was tense as fuck. Hey, and she was great in it. The shark was great in it. The CGI guys were great in it, so <laughs> there you go. So, on a scale of, um, on the Blake Lively scale, right? Yeah. And I've just made this scale up in my head right now as yep, you yep. were talking. She was in Green Lantern with mm-hmm. Ryan Reynolds, mm-hmm. and she was like, I don't know, cardboard in that movie. She was also in The Town with Ben Affleck, and for a coked out whore, she was actually very good in that movie. Allegedly. Allegedly. No, like, I'm not in real life. In the movie, she was a coked out <laughs> whore. You fucking idiot. So, on a scale of Green Lantern to the town, where are you putting Blake Lively in the shallows? Fucking hell. Don't say Turbo Kid. That's not an answer. I'm not going to say Turbo Kid. <laughs> How the fuck do I answer that? <laughs> it was better than Open War. It was better than Deep Blue Sea. Better than Deep Blue Sea? Oh, fuck yes. Okay. Fuck yes. It was really, really tense. She is brilliant in it. The CGI is brilliant in it. And there are quite a few good scares in it as well. Give it a try. I like it. I will. Excellent. So, yeah. um, I watched a movie. Oh, dear. Uh, I think it's like a year old. And me and Lindsay sat down to watch a movie and we couldn't find anything. And and it had Robert De Niro in it. And I was sat there thinking... Is he in drag? No, no. I right. thought... I would have taken that movie anyway. <laughs> I, I was sat there thinking, when was the last time I saw Robert De Niro in a truly good role? A truly good movie, in fact. Tell you what, actually, I'm going to stop you for one little wee second, because Don't, I, don't say meet the fuckers. No, 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 never that, never that. Not meet the parents. Never that. No, I watched Ronan for the first time in fucking years yeah, that's the a, other that's night. that's like 97. That My God, that movie is so fucking good. <laughs> it is and a I've good not movie. Watched that, oh, mate, I've not watched that fucking movie in years. Uh, it was on Sky, uh, Sky Movies. Back to, back to your point. Ronan is great. That is a good movie, but that's what I'm saying. Like he hasn't made a good movie in a fucking long time because he keeps making all these like dodgy like comedies. I mean, 
analyse this, analyse that, meet the parents, meet the fuckers, just fucking what is he doing? And then even when he teamed up with Al Pacino again, after making Heat, he teamed up with him for The Righteous Kill. What a load of shite that movie was. Never seen that. Because it was like, oh, how do we make this movie from uh, different from Heat? Oh, I know, we'll just flip the roles. So it was like Al Pacino was the bad guy and De Niro was the good guy, but they wanted to make you think all the way through the movie that De Niro was the bad guy, so uh, 50 Cent was in it. What a pile of shit. I digress. Mm -hmm. The other night, me and Lindsay sat down and watched a movie called The Intern. It came out last year with Robert De Niro and Anne Hathaway, and it was fucking good. Shit. (laughs) It was actually a really good movie. Like, I'm not going to say it's like anything above like a, a three. No, I'll give it more than that. Maybe like a five. It's it's a middle of the road movie, but De Niro's performance in it is fantastic. He, he's like the, the aged retired man. Like he's he's not had a job for a while. His wife died years back, and he's never really got himself back into the game. So when he does get himself back into the game, it's as an intern for like um, an online shopping company. He knows nothing about like the internet. Basically, he knows nothing about what they do. But he's able to go in and just be an old school gentleman and sort of influence these young upstarts. And it's just such a cool movie. Like Anne Hathaway is just Anne Hathaway in it all over the place. Like even in a shit movie when she puts in a shit performance, she's still quite good in it. Yeah. You know, it's it's Anne Hathaway. I do, I do yeah, love I'll Anne agree Hathaway. with that. I'll agree with that. And uh, she's like really busy because it's her company. It's kind of like she swapped roles with what's her name in Devil's we- Devil Wears Prada. She's kind of she is that role now. Just not a bitch. And uh, she's, like, not giving him the time of day. He gets teamed up with her. He just becomes a part of our life sort of thing. Mm. It sounds like a, a Lifetime movie of the week. I know it does, like a Hallmark Channel movie. But it really isn't. And De Niro is just fucking brilliant in it. Were you crying by the end? There was a scene. And you know that that's how I gauge if it's a good movie or not. If it has me in tears. There was a point near the end where... I didn't cry, but there was, <laughs> there was a massive, massive lump in my throat. The intern. Really good movie. I recommend it. Uh, fair enough. The only thing is, like, it, it's not one of those movies where you think it's all going to go Pete Tong. It kind of does go a little bit Pete Tong, but you, you're not expecting it. And Lindsay turns around to me. I'd say a good halfway through the movie. It looks at me and goes, Robert De Niro's going to die, isn't he? <laughs> and I was like, I really don't think it's that kind of movie. Why, <laughs> why would you think that? Like... <laughs> what kind of world are we living in nowadays when that's what you think like he's gonna die no no spoilers here if he does or he doesn't but it's just such a cool movie and he's great in it just Robert De Niro I'm not gonna say he's back on form because he'll probably make meet the fuckers 10, ten yeah. next week and he'll just destroy everything I think of him again but this was like a return to form. I hadn't seen him in anything this this good. Like a, his performance hadn't been this good for a long time, from my book. So it was nice to see him putting in a good performance again. So yeah, the intern. Fair enough. Fair enough. I just wanted to bring up. And that that's that's movies we've watched. Yeah. Recently. So speaking of what we've been watching. Oh. Hello. Yeah. I know, right. <laughs> Exciting. <laughs> you milk, you're milking this section. Thriller. So Game of Thrones season six is finished. Oh, man. And I re- I really you've did, I been a... I didn't want to get into this. You've been a massive whiny little bitch about this season. Yeah. It's the hype train. Mm. I, I am start. I am starting to feel like I'm I'm hating things for the sake of hating them. And by the way, I did. I recently got called a hater. No, I didn't. I got called a troll on, on Facebook. Apparently I'm a troll now. Well, you are. <laughs> That's the Urban Dictionary version of a troll, which, you know, the Urban Dictionary isn't a fucking No, I'm not thing. calling you a... F- fucking actual troll and but then anybody you who, put stuff on Facebook one to get a bite so, yeah sometimes but yeah, that's not a troll do. a troll is somebody who puts things on Facebook to put someone down and to call them worse than shite I go fishing is what uh, I do uh-huh. I, I put my bait on the rod and I and it's normally me that replies it's normally you that replies yeah but but yeah like but the thing with the Game of Thrones is that I, I, the hype train was massive for those last two episodes that battle of the bastards was a it was a fucking mess of an episode. It was a mess, and you going on there and be like, "Ah, oh, but the bit with Jon Snow's all underneath all the people, and he's getting trampled on tense as fuck." It wasn't. It was just fucking stupid. It was stupid. And then he claws himself up, and he looks out above all the different people. And I just and then it just ends. All that build up for the Battle of the Bastards, and it just ends. Like Littlefinger turns up, and he goes, "Ah." 
you didn't say the magic words. And it just ends. Okay, he didn't say that, but he might as well have. Dennis Nedry style. And then Ramsey runs away, and then they chase down Ramsey. I did nearly throw up in my mouth when the dog was looking at his face. I was sat there going, but it wasn't a good series. Okay. I do think, like you said last week, I do think when the box set comes out and I watch it all back to back to back, I might feel differently. Mm -hmm. I, I might. Here's the thing. I actually thought that about the last season. Yeah, you, you said that. Yeah, you've said that. And um, when I watched it back to back, it was a fucking lot better. Yeah. But uh, we're not going to go into the whole season. No, no. Because no. Uh, because uh, J- um, Jeff and Blake are going to be doing that on Hobby next oh, week. Them do we that. don't want to steal their thunder, you know. They're a bit precious. That's their them. show. They love I, that shit. Yeah. Although Blake that. did agree with me about the Battle of the Bastards. In what respect? Blake also thought that it was a massive just mess, just convoluted to fuck, just nothing really went anywhere, and then it just ended. Although he did credit it because it was like um, they must have basically made it as a reenactment of a battle that actually happened. Yeah, I read that in history. That. Props um, for that. Props for that. Yeah, I mean, people who uh, there were a lot of people saying the Battle of the Bastards was the best Game of Thrones episode ever. I wouldn't agree with that whatsoever. Mm. However. What you said just now about the bit where like Jon Snow's getting covered that in the body. Pish. It wasn't pish, it was fucking awesome. It was pish. It wasn't pish. It was, You're... T- it was completely pish. No, it wasn't pish. You're pish. <laughs> okay, you won that argument. Exactly. Because I'm the 365 champion, so you are, I won you, that one. You are. But let's talk about the finale for a second then. Yep. Yeah, I kind of want to slap you in the face. Why? Because how can you... Just for me, personally for me, and I, I think... I think a lot of people agree with me. For me, that was the best episodes they've ever, uh, the best episode of Game of Thrones they've ever done. I probably couldn't tell you what I think the best episode is, but I don't think it's, I, I think it's probably the the one where it ended with Tyrion, the the trial by combat. I love that episode. I love that whole episode, and then it ended with that awesome speech. I'll have no justice here. Yeah. Like it's just fucking awesome. Well, you can't beat a Turian speech. You can't, you can't. And I think maybe that's one of the things that this series has been lacking. Oh, very if, much. Is Tyrion. Um, I mean, in that final episode, we had a little scene with Tyrion and Daenerys. Yeah. And uh, that was just great, mm-hmm. you know. But that episode as a whole, I mean, it was about, I think it was about 70 odd minutes long. You had Cersei getting her own back and becoming the fucking... The... Could care less about that by now. But, right. I've kind of drawn a line under Cersei, as in... But you've drawn a line under Cersei. Yep. You've drawn a line under fucking Daenerys. Yes. You've drawn a line under fucking Arya. No, no, I haven't drawn a line under Arya. I just think she needs to start doing something. And she, she fucking did in the finale! She, she, she fucking did something. Phrase. She fucking... She did something in that episode, but I was just kind of like... All I was thinking was, so how the fuck did she get there? Like, all of a sudden she's there. So you've drawn a line under Jon Snow. Oh yeah, I drew a line under, under him. Sansa. Unless John saw Snow and Sansa start boning, I've drawn a line under both of them. Ew. It could go there. It's Game of Thrones. So you've drawn a line under the John Snow storyline, which is pretty much going to be the main storyline leading up to the fucking finale of the fucking show. Called it. You did call it. Called it. Told you he was going to be a Targaryen. So and I don't even read the fucking. Books. What is the point of you actually watching this show? You're not enjoying it because I like Bronn. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I, I like Bron and I like Jamie Lannister, okay? This is why people call you a troll. Because you're fucking watching it just to fucking put on Facebook no, or whatever. No. Oh, this was shit, this was shit, this was shit, this was shit. That last episode started, right? And I would say right up until the first break, it was like watching the fucking Godfather. I was sitting there thinking, this is phenomenal. Like that whole the the opening twenty it was like twenty minutes before you got the first break. Mm-hmm. It was phenomenal. Like all the like the high sparrow having them in the in the room with Marjorie was there and then the mountain going to Tom and, and just all the build up. I'm sitting there thinking this is fucking amazing and the music was just so like You know what? It reminded me a little I don't know if you maybe agree with this or not that whole bit where it was going back and forward, mm-hmm. you know, to the different guys, it reminded me a lot of, like, Nolan. Oh, it was very Nolan. It had a sense of Nolan mm-hmm. eye. But it, for, for me, it felt like The Godfather Part 1 at the end. Is it Part 1 or is it Part 2? When he's he's, he's at a christening. It's, I think it's Part 2. He's at a christening. No, it's Part 1. 
and they're basically all his henchmen are going out and they're taking out all like the the, the different yeah, people. Yeah, I think that's how I'm, uh, part one ends. Part one it? ends. Yeah. You know, and she goes, Michael, Michael, tell me, did it happen? All that shit. But it felt like that little scene in The Godfather Part 1 when people were going around and doing his bidding and it was just like, build up, build up, build up, build up. And then it came back after the break and it felt like a completely different episode. I was like, what am I watching now? It just didn't feel the same anymore. It didn't feel as, I don't know, like, as... as I don't know the word. It just didn't feel as that the but, first 20 minutes did. And I know you can't have a full 70, 80 minutes of that. You can't have that. But the first 20 minutes built me into a place where when that first advert came on, I was like, oh my God, we're, s- we're in for a thrill right here. But you know, you had the, like, uh, was it before the first break? Cersei had the, the shame woman tied, that, was, that was after the first break. Tied up on the bed. Aye. And then the mount, zombie mountain came in and it was very, very heavily implied that she was going to be raped to death. Yep. Um, you know, and that, I mean, fucking hell. Mm-hmm. You know, and then we get we get winter. I, I did like that. It just it felt like the episode went from one place to a completely different place, and for some reason, I felt like I was no longer connected to the episode. And then every time it cut to Jon Snow, I was just kind of like, I "Don't need to be here. Take us back to Westeros. Let's see what's going on there." And it just uh, we we've always said that the thing Game of Thrones does so well is that it gives everybody an an equal an equal amount of time, like. It, it doesn't stay too long in one place. It doesn't stay too short in one place. Yeah, yeah. It bounces around. And we always say The Walking Dead needs to take tips from what Game of Thrones does. This episode, I didn't necessarily want to move away from certain scenes and they just kept moving. You've given us 20 minutes of what I would actually say. I would actually say that the first 20 minutes of that last last episode was the best 20 minutes in TV I've seen in a long time. It just had me on the edge of my seat the whole way, and then the break came on, and then it came back. It didn't feel the same. It was almost like two different people directed it. To, that's how it felt to me. I just, I don't, I don't, I really don't care. And you're not alone. You're not alone because everybody loved it. I mean, the um, the scene uh, we, we spoke about the scene with Tyrion and Daenerys, yeah. and Daenerys is finally on her way yeah. to Westeros. Good, awesome, happy days. Um, but the scene with the the king in the north, I fucking literally had I liked, the hairs on my arms were on end. Honestly, I'm not joking. I I had goosebumps on that scene. The king that. in the north, I fucking did. I had goosebumps. I did like that scene. The scene with Arya, where she takes off the face because Arya's, you know, she she's who cares how she fucking got there? I don't know. Who gives a fuck how she got there? She's, she, you know, she's learned her trade. She's learned how to be an assassin. She got there. Fucking one way or another, she got there. Yeah. She's in, she's fucking gotten her way in there. She fucking kills a guy who killed her mother and her brother. And she gets yeah. revenge and she fucking slits it. She's killed both of his sons, baked them, Which made quite a like. pork pie out of them. I just, I just quite like that. <laughs> I'll never eat a pork pie again. And then slits the bastard's throat. Yes. How could you, I... I'm not again, saying it was bad. Again, I punched the fucking air in that scene. I punched the air. I scared the shit out of the dog in that <laughs> scene. I'm not joking. I went fucking go on, are ya? I'm not saying it was bad. I liked it. I just felt like I'd been pulled out of the episode too far by that point. Like it just, I couldn't. I wasn't as invested anymore in that episode once it was the break that done it for me. It came back after the break, and I just felt like I didn't really know where I was, and I was trying to get back into it. I like the Arya scene. I did like the Arya scene. Was it as powerful as the Ian, uh, Ian McNeese scene in, oh, in the no. last series? No, not Ian not, McNeese. not at all. Ian Beatty. <laughs> <laughs> That's a bad one to make. Isn't it? The, the Ian Beatty scene yep. edited. <laughs> yes, yeah, not as good as the Ian Beatty scene, Chris. <laughs> but yeah, it wasn't as no, good it wasn't as that. Kevin. Then like it pulled, it went away to um, Daenerys talking to the to Theon and, and the sister wasn't really that fussed with that and then it kind of the episode it felt like two different people had done it for me it just and it was a good episode it was I don't think I ever said that I hated it I did say I didn't like it it didn't feel right to me you said it was tear gas it was tear you gas said, you texted me while you were watching it saying it was tear gas there was just bits bits of that episode that they kept moving away to shit I couldn't have given two fucks about what I'll say to you to wrap, to wrap this bit up before we go into our top five in a minute, <laughs> it's okay to not watch a show anymore. <laughs> but I've done six series. 
Yeah, you've done six series, but the last two you've bitched like a motherfucker. It's like Dexter. I never gave up on Dexter. All right, I did. I did eight like, series of Dexter. I, I um with Fringe. Yeah, remember Fringe? Series four of Fringe was fan fucking tastic, mm-hmm. and series five of Fringe was, was going to be its last. I spent fucking how long was Fringe? Was it like twelve episodes, or yeah. was it longer? I think it was longer. I think it was longer. Right? Maybe towards the was end. It a they full could, series. They, was... they might have done a lost with it towards the end and, and cut it short. But I spent the whole of that last season expecting it to get good, and it never did. It sucked balls. And that's what I'm. Th- that's why I stick. So it with that's why I'm saying to you, it's okay not to watch a show anymore if you're not enjoying it. I'm not going to not watch it though because I know how good Game of Thrones can be. Yeah, but you're watching it and you're saying it's tear gas and it's getting on my fucking tits. Because <laughs> it felt that way. To I was, you. I was just kind of like, where I'd read things, like I, I, I never read spoilers, but I'd read people saying, oh, this is like the best thing ever, uh, better than the Battle of the Bastards. And I'm sitting there thinking, it was better than the Battle of the Bastards. I'm sitting there thinking the Battle of the Bastards wasn't that good anyway. So, yeah, you've won me over there. For, for me personally, as 365 Flights Champion. <laughs> um, it was the best episode of Game of Thrones to date. Okay. Play a promo. When it comes back, <laughs> when the show comes back, or when the box set is released, I will watch it again. Yeah. And I think, hope. honestly, I think if it wasn't such an impatient prick, I think that would be the way forward, is to wait for the yeah. box set. But uh, there's no way in hell I'm ever going to do that. No, because then everybody will have told you everything. Yeah. Hey guys, this is Nick from the Epic Film Guys podcast, and you are listening to the 365 Flicks podcast. Not only your source for great movie news, outside of our own podcast, of course, but also your source for everything from The Walking Dead. And all of this comes from a pissy ex video store clerk and a Scottish weed and whore. Your vocal heroes of pissy opinion. It is, again, the 365 Flicks podcast. Please jump over to iTunes and give them a rating and follow them on Twitter at 365 Flicks Pod. And now here's a little taste of what the Epic Film Guys podcast is all about. Even when the composer wasn't that great, they were like no-namers, but they come up with these iconic themes, which even films you that get are complete, head. Even films that are complete shit fests, like, Garbage. Stallone's, yeah. like Stallone's Judge Dredd. Dun, 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 Like, that theme is so iconic, it sticks Don't right in your head. Don't call that movie shit. We both know that's your favorite movie of all time. All right. It, it definitely is one of them. I, I, I will <laughs> readily admit to that. A little bit, let's put a little more lighthearted feel in this. What are you doing down there, Judge Hershey? Waiting for backup. <laughs> hey, Diane it's Lane. Here. Diane Lane, man. That was Nick and Justin. Mm-hmm. From the- dun, 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 dun. <laughs> that, that's an awesome promo. That's yeah, an awesome promo. And they cut that for us. Mm-hmm. Nick, Nick, did. Nick went out of his way did. to cut that for us. And, that, that, you know, Nick's a cool guy. One of the one of the awesome people at Pod and Family on on the Twitters. Absolutely, I'm getting some uh, some love off those guys. And uh, Nick's cool. I like him. He made that promo. He says he's he's building an, he's making another one to to send to us soon. So that'll be cool. Do so we need to do it back? I don't know. I've not done that one for Hobie yet. I need to do that one. Well, st- with the kids? Yeah, they're still going on like they want one from Ruby. But yeah. I honestly think Blake thinks she's going to be like Dick Van Dyke, and that scares me. I do. <laughs> Like I, th- I think Blake has this impression in his head that Ruby's just going to come on and be like, "All right, governors, you're listening to history of bad ideas." You are. That was a brilliant impression. Th- that was actually <laughs> really good. You know what annoyed me, right? Let's go political for a wee second before oh, we get to the top oh. five. I've done my political thing with Lindsay Lohan. No, shush, shush, shush. After the EU thing. Okay. 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 Um, there was a, a a screenshot of the front page of I believe it was the New Yorker. Right, and and it it was. Do you remember? I think um, it was the Monty Python guy. You know, like the one with John Cleese with the bowler hat on. Yeah, yeah. And it was the bowler hat guy walking off the cliff. <laughs> yeah. Which okay, that's pretty apt because you know it's. I think it's been called the worst week in British politics history, mm-hmm. which is probably accurate. <laughs> But that's the New Yorker drawing this, and I thought, oh, because we all fucking wear bowler hats and fucking, <laughs> you know, uh, just... Uh, is that not their way of saying that Britain is just a farcical comedy now? Well, ag- again, but you know, 
fuck you. People <laughs> in glass houses through, shooting through stones, Americans. Well, at the end of the day, <laughs> we we uh, we may be out of the EU and we may be going down a slippery slope, but they're going to have Donald Trump running the country. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> exactly. So, yeah, let's move on to our top Let's do five. top five. How did you come up with this top five, Chris? I just had a splurge. Another splurge. Another splurge. You like a splurge. I do like a splurge. Yeah. 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 So, the top- yeah. So, the top five yeah. is... It is. <laughs> <laughs> TV shows that we think should be movies. So, we're talking in a theoretical world mm-hmm. uh, where you've got the right writers, the, the correct... Or the right writers... The, the, the right writers. The right writers. They're Africa and the right writers and all about this thing. Fuck. I can't believe I said Ian McNeese instead of Ian B. What I a know. tit. I know. <laughs> anyway, so you've got the correct writers, everything's happy days. You've got the good the good directors in there, good producers in there, they've got the right actors in there, right team in there. Yep. Everything's spot on exactly how it should be. So what T V shows should be made into the movies? And that's the worriest top five we've ever had. That's wordier than mine a couple of episodes ago. <laughs> I know. And uh, I just I just want to put out there, this wasn't an easy list for me. No? No, I actually, I struggled with this. Um, when you said it last night, I thought, oh, that'll be so easy. I will get that. Like, ten, I'll get five movies in, like, a minute. And I've got, like, one movie in, like, five minutes. Up to you. Yeah. It, it took a while for me to get this one. So... It's your section. Why don't you kick off with your number five? Okay. My number five was actually suggested to me by Paul Byrne. Wow. I know. Holy shit. He got quite involved with this. You know what? I like when Paul Byrne actually takes mm-hmm. interest in this in this uh, thing of ours. I like that. You know what surprised me? I went for a, a cheeky meal with my sister and my mum. Irie. Like, at the end of last week. And my sister is a listener. <gasps> I better shut my damn mouth then. I know. My sister actually listens to the podcast, and I couldn't... What, more than, like, five minutes, or does she just click five minutes, and then we get the download, and then that's it? I believe she listens to the whole thing. Wow. Mind blown. I know. As in... (laughs) I know. That's pretty cool. Yeah. My sister doesn't listen to it, because she's a filthy whore. Jesus Christ, (laughs) okay. So my number five... Allegedly. Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) Fucking hell. Uh, My number five, suggested by Paul Byrne, is Strike Back. Oh, wow. Does he just want Call of Duty with strike back characters? Basically, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you know That's what? A good choice, it's, uh, That's a really if good choice. Uh, Americans don't know what strike back is, it's a, mo- it's a TV show on Sky One or whatever. Yeah. Atlantic, Sky One, Summer Nothing. Uh, it's a British SES type movie. Yep. You've got. What the fuck is the name of the guy? The, the American the guy, guy in from there. Blind Spot. Is yeah. that the one you're thinking of? The guy from Sullivan Stapleton. That's the one. That's, That's the, the one. one. Sullivan Stapleton. Did you not want him as James Bond I at did. one point? Yeah, he was in your top five. Did I? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Um, you've got him in there, and don't you know, ask me the other guys. British now. actors in there too. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was a damn fine TV show, mm-hmm. and there was talk of it becoming a movie. Yeah. To wrap it up, and I would be up for that. I think it. Would, I think it would make a. Actually, I think it would make a good movie franchise. It probably could, it very much could, and it would pretty much just be Call of Duty. So you know, you know, the big part of the show was you had these two guys, with the, and the two of them, the two leads of the show, had fucking fantastic chemistry together. They were like bitching each other, like just well, me and you, yeah, you know, you like had- mates do. They were fucking sniping each other during a gunfight and all that yeah. kind of thing, taking the piss out of each other. They had great chemistry. They had the show had great action scenes. Uh, I mean, they had great storylines and did. all that. They really did. It would make an awesome movie. Me and Lindsay watched that. We absolutely loved that. It was. Um, I loved the dynamic of the uh, the American who shagged absolutely everything under the sun, yeah. and the Brit who shot first and asked questions later. We did. We did. I actually watched that with with Barn. Yeah. And we had a we had sort of a running, almost a drinking game, almost. Mm-hmm. Where we kind of said, right, how how many minutes into this episode before is it going to be before Sullivan Stapleton gets his hole? Aye. So, yeah. And how many, you could play a game of how many people is the other guy going to kill before asking a single question? 
Because he used to kill every one he of did. the leads. He like. did. Yeah, he did. <laughs> <laughs> so my number five is Strike Back. Well, my number five. Mm-hmm. My number five is I cheated a little bit. Oh, did you hobby it? I didn't hobby it. I'll hobby later on. I cheated a little bit on this one because it was a movie, <gasps> and then it became a TV show. <gasps> And I would love them to finish off the story of all these characters in a movie. I know what you're going to say. This is England. Yep. <laughs> we have championed This Is England yes, we have. Uh, recently quite a lot. We've both been... Uh, I literally watched two series in two nights. Don't advise it. Uh, mm-hmm. I, and I still think it's a phenomenal TV show. The movie was fantastic. And I think the only way to end this story... Because I don't think we... We didn't really end it. We we kind of end it. It was in a happy sort of place. It was in a good place, but I think let's just let's just go out with the movie. You know, I think there's still stories to be told. Oh, there's lots of stories to be told, and the interesting thing, Chris, yes, Kevin, thank you, is that I went on Wikipedia and apparently Shane Meadows is trying or he's looking to come up with the, uh, a movie. Wow! And this was. Like I thought of it straight away. This was like the one on my list that I thought of, which is why it's at it's five, because that's the way I work. And I thought I would love them just to finish off those characters, that story, with another movie. And just bookend it, the first movie, the second movie. Let's, let's you know. Yeah, I'd, I'd be up for that. I, I would watch that. I would that. love to. And I'd I would be probably... It. Can we have it set now, though? Can, just... can we have it set in, like... Because in the 80s, they're all in, like, the 30s. Do you not think they would all be dead by now? Yeah, they'd all be quite old, wouldn't they? Let's let's put it in the, uh, the early two thousands. You could put it in the early two thousands when the Millennium Bug was going. You could have um, you could have Woody in the factory thing, worrying about all the computers because the Millennium Bug. That'd be pretty cool. Because I've been I've been rewatching a show called Misfits. Mm-hmm. Now, I didn't get as far as uh, Joseph Gilkin coming into that show. Yeah. Back in the day when the first it, when time it around, yeah. yeah. When it was on Channel 4. Fuck me, he's so good. He's good in it. He's amazing in it. Honestly, he's, he's Ru- I, I, Rudy, isn't he? Yeah. Ah, he's Rudy 1 and Rudy 2. And Rudy 3 as it gets further in. Yes. Yeah. yes. <laughs> um, so, yeah, the premise of the show is people... There's a big storm and uh, there's some guys who are on community service. There's a big storm and they all got superpowers. Yep. But then so does everybody else in the city. Yeah. So it's kind of like The Flash. It is. It is. Wow. Only better than The Flash. Wow. It's interesting you say that, because mm-hmm. I want to jump to my number four right now, Oosh. because I wanted the Misfits. <laughs> oh, I, a flash. Wow. I, I wanted a Misfits movie. What, seriously? Yes, I would love to see a wow. Misfits movie. I would love to see a Misfits movie with uh, Joe Gilgun Gilgun, in there. definitely. Fucking uh, right. Ba- basically, that cast when Gilgun was in it, and a cameo from Robert Sheehan. I'd love to see him yeah. come into it. See, he kind of... He left the show to go into Passage New. Yeah, and it and didn't really, didn't work, really out. work out. He did a movie called Killing Bono. Which is fantastic. It is a very good movie, yep. but I don't think he's done anything since then. Am I, am I wrong? He did, uh, he did a movie called Season of the Witch with Nicolas Cage. Oh, shit, that's right. He, he said, that. oh, the poor guy. It's never really taken off from Oh, I bet Brigger loves that movie, though. <laughs> I bet Brigger fucking dotes on that movie. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, that was my number four was was Misfits, which you know my first two picks have got Joe Gilgun in, so you know it shows you what the rest of my list is going to be like. Fair enough, fair enough. But yeah, I would I would absolutely love to see it. it could be the British version of Chronicle, basically, and that's kind of how I had it in my head. Yeah. I was like, exactly the way they done Chronicle. It doesn't have to be phone footage, like cameras and all that kind of thing. But that's all you would have to do. Just set it in Britain. I wouldn't even take it over to America. I would just set it in Britain, have the British humour. I'd get Edgar Wright in there to, to direct it from um, Space and all that. I, I love the series. Why the hell not? Yeah. And I think it would work as a movie. Just a bunch of kids on community service with superpowers. What's not to love? <laughs> so you're sure. number four. My number four, I'm going to stay British. You almost stole my number four there, you bastard. Why? I got a little bit... When you said I Misfits... I just said he was good. I wasn't going to say anything. When you said Misfits, I was like, no, that's my number four. <laughs> <laughs> I'm scared of <laughs> I'm You know what it is? I'm feeling a wicked Wild Wild West impression coming on. Speaking of that, We Hate Movies, <laughs> this week coming, are doing Wild Wild West. Ah, uh, I'm in. I'm listening. And also, by the way, listen to... Last week's episode, it's another 48 hours. I listened to it. The Nick, Nolte epi- the, the Nick Nolte impressions were They're, flowing. They, they are absolutely and amazing. And fuck me. <laughs> uh, 
Oh man, I was walking along, <laughs> pissing myself, laughing. Brilliant. Aye, definitely. Anyway, so I'm staying British for number four. And again, we're saying this is, you get all the correct actors, the correct director, the correct writers, and all that kind of thing. So my number four is Doctor Who. I knew you were going to go Doctor Who. I would love to see a <laughs> David Tennant. A David Tennant? Yep. Interesting. Yep. David Tennant, Doctor Who movie. Uh, written by Stephen Moffat, maybe directed as well by Stephen Moffat. I'm not sure. Does he do directing duties or he does directing duties? I think. Okay, I think he does. Um, if not, I'll get you know whoever, just, <laughs> just whoever. get it done. Get Spielberg in there, it'd be fine. <laughs> um, yeah, I think there's been talk of a of a standalone Doctor Who movie and all that kind of thing, but uh, when they spoke about it, it was Doctor Who as an actual standalone yeah. where it had absolutely nothing to do with the lore oh, well, that's pointless. of the TV show. And yeah. that is pointless, Kev. Yeah. That is fucking pointless because what are you going to do that for? Mm-hmm. The whole thing is you've got you've got 13 other uh, sort of versions of the Doctor in the past and yeah. all that kind of thing. Uh, so if you do that, if you, if you do a movie on its own, standalone, you've got none of that to go back to. No. You've got none of that connected to it and all that kind of thing. David Tennant, for me, he is Doctor Who at its absolute height. I love Matt Smith. I love Peter Capaldi. Mm -hmm. Um, But David Tennant, I think, is Doctor Who at its absolute popularity. Yeah, it seemed to be. So if you're going to do a Doctor Who movie, you've got to get this guy in there as the the Doctor. I mean, by all means, have a multi-Doctor. In a a purple suit? Yes. (laughs) Have a multi Doctor movie. Have Matt Smith in there. I think there. they probably would have do Capaldi Martin. in there. Have yeah. Eccleston in there if he'll do it, you know. But uh, it needs to be a David Tennant movie as the Doctor. Don't get don't get Rose Tyler back. <laughs> get Catherine Tate back. Yeah. What about our buddy Calvin Scott writing it? Fuck yes. <laughs> Fuck yes. Why the devil not? I just threw that in there because you know I like to pimp our own shit. Yep. Yep. We do like that. We do like that guy, and I can't wait for the upcoming yep. my, uh, Doctor my, Who event from him. My impending review has already been written on the on the page. I'm not 100% sure when it's allowed to go live. I think... Probably I think, better check this. Yes. I'll, that's why it's not out there yet. <laughs> you do have to check these things, mm. you know. So, yeah, so Doctor Who. I kind of knew you were going to go with Doctor Who. It, it was a given in my I head. think you've probably got two of mine figured yeah. out. Well, no. Well, because yeah. I, I did say to you last night, so I'm going to go number five, Buffy. Number four, <laughs> Buffy. Number three, Buffy. Number two, Buffy. Number one, Buffy. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Actually. So what is your number three then? Because I went like five okay. and four and then. Uh, I'm not going to go Buffy. Not yet. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> Spoilers. So, no, fuck it. I'm going to go Buffy. <laughs> <laughs> but Buffy's already had a movie. No, fuck that though. Well, you want Buffy with the Buffy cast? Yes. Right. Okay. I knew you were going to say Buffy, and, and I'm not going to argue with you. Buffy needs a movie. Yeah. And with Joss Whedon, yeah. writing and directing the original cast, as you say, there was talk. I think it's gone by the wayside now. Good. <laughs> because they did this shit. They were planning this this Buffy movie, and they weren't involved in. Joss Whedon but this was pre-Avengers ah right so I think Joss Whedon has got a little bit more pull and power now so now he's now he's the Avengers Joss Whedon Mm -hmm. he does whatever the hell he wants exactly (laughs) Exactly. so get a Buffy movie made Sarah Michelle Gellar get your fucking arse in gear you're not really up to anything are you now love Get your ass in gear. She's Instagram on a lot. Oh, dear. She's always on the Instagram. And to be fair... Well, she was making a, mo- uh, a, a TV show with Robin Williams, and well, that didn't work out, did it? So... Wow. Wow. Fuck. That, was a, bit, that was a bit dark. So, yeah. What's your next one? <laughs> wow. My next one is a TV show that, let's be honest, we were promised a movie off this TV show for a good six seasons. I would like to see a community movie. Oh, fuck. <laughs> I thought you were going to take my number one there, you motherfucker. <laughs> the tagline for that TV show is six seasons in a movie. Mm-hmm. And I want to see one. I want to see them do, you know, like the episodes with the pillow fort? Yep. I want to see them do a movie like that. The episodes where it turned into animated. I want to see an episode like that. I didn't like that. It, it wasn't, like it that. wasn't the best stuff. But yeah, I want a community movie. We've had our six seasons. They they did five on the normal and then they did mm. one on Yahoo, which apparently is a really 
brilliant series. I've only seen like a couple of episodes of it because I got really confused. Is it still the main cast on the Yahoo? Yeah, it's it's yeah. still the main cast. Right. Everybody's still there apart from Chevy, but, but he'd already left by that point, hadn't he? They killed him off, didn't they? Yeah, because he was he was an arse to work with, <laughs> allegedly. I don't believe that. I don't believe it because he's a funny guy, and he's not racist in the slightest. Oh, I know. But yeah, we were told... I believe it'll be as funny as working with Bill Murray. Not a complete cunt at all. <laughs> and we were told uh, six seasons in the movie, I want my damn movie. Mm-hmm. I would love to see those characters again. I want to see Abed and Troy. You know, Troy and Abed in the morning. I want to see it. I need me some more community. It's like everybody goes on about Arrested Development, uh, Always Sunny in Philadelphia. People love those shows. They're kind of still going. The rest of the development keeps fucking resurrecting from the ashes. Mm. Sunny in Philadelphia is like on its like millionth season. I won't lie, I've never watched either of those two. I've watched a little bit of Arrested Development. It's not for me. Uh, Sunny in Philadelphia, I think I watched two seasons and I just never got back into it because it's on Netflix. We were told six seasons in a movie and I'm going to fucking hold them to it. I want my damn movie. So, number three, Community. Fair enough. <laughs> so what's your number two? My number two, I hobied. Oh, shit. I did hobie this one. And I had to hobie it because one of them was going to end up on my honourable mentions, but I needed to put it in there. The other one, I need a movie of. I just don't fucking know how they're going to do it. So, neither of these shows, I don't know how they would do a movie, but 24 or Deadwood. Bastard. I would love to see a movie of either of those two shows... I just have no idea how they would do either Deadwood of them. Deadwood is my number two. Is your number two? Yeah. Well, two, that's good. But um, Yeah, I'll, Deadwood is... Apparently, Deadwood is being developed. It's, it's been in the pipeline for a while. Um, yeah, it's been in the pipeline since <laughs> it got cancelled. <laughs> yeah. Because it shouldn't have been fucking cancelled. It's like worse than Firefly cancelled. <laughs> so, Deadwood should not have been cancelled. It should still be fucking well going now. Yeah. Apparently... I don't think I ever finished it. But I, I've seen oh, like the, I've oh seen the, I've seen at least the first three seasons. There's only three. Is there only three? Well, yeah. I've seen it then. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, um, yeah, because it, it was a really shitty ending as well. So it needs a movie. It does. A- apparently, it is in development. Well, he's not doing Game of Thrones because he was only in one fucking episode. Well, yeah, but we need more Swedish. What was all that about? Although I think I think he did say that. When it was announced he was going to be in it. Oh, is that why all the fanboys got nuts about it and he said it was just tits and dragons? Uh, Deadwood, I would love to see a show of that. I don't know how they would do it. 24. We need- Deadwood, uh, Deadwood, they could do that in a heartbeat. Well, just, there you go. Just do it then. You know, it's an Old West movie. No. But you need an HBO Aye. Old West movie where you've got guys having their fucking eyes being pulled out. <laughs> and, you know, oh, it's so fucking good. And I'm not ready to say goodbye to Jack Bauer. And if they're going to give this young kid a shot at the TV well, show... we've always said Die Hard 24-7. <laughs> Die Hard 24-7. We did make that movie. We did make that movie. That was in a previous episode, if you want to go and look for that. It was... Um, I can't remember the bloody episode of that. But it, we, we basically did a 365 cut of um, Die Hard of the Vengeance. No, no, no that was... A good Day to Die Hard. Good Day to Die Hard. We, uh, a Good Day to Die Hard. That is ridiculous. Our version was better. We did an awesome version of that in which Chris killed everyone off. Yeah. <laughs> which was, uh, you know... It Although was, our version of Spider-Man 3, I killed everyone off as well. Yeah, you so. did, I. Yep. It was quite challenging for me to work with that, but it was awesome having John McLean in a, in a, good, in a good Die Hard movie. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you bastard. Go, go back, listen to that episode. It was fantastic. We redid Die Hard, and it, it didn't suck. It was but, great. Uh, Paul Trotter on the show. Paul was here, yeah. He's going oh. to be coming back in a show... Hopefully very soon. We need him back soon. Uh, that was, once little Anakin's do, do we bring back the come along. 365 cut for that? Well, we've got we've got other plans for Paul. Okay. That, that sounded wrong. Yeah, it did. Yep. It did. <laughs> it sounded like he may be coming here of his not of his own volition. We don't talk about that. I've got the I've got the old bottle. Right. So So your number two is also My Deadwood. number two is Deadbird, so I am gonna go number one. Don't steal it. In case you in case you steal it. I'm sticking with HBO. <sighs> And I'm going to say Sopranos. Oh, thank God for that. I'm with you. I'm 100% with you. I didn't have it. No, I don't want a Sopranos movie with Tony Soprano. I want a uh, Sopranos movie with Tony Soprano Sr. Eh? Tony's dad. Oh, right. <laughs> you daft prick. <laughs> well, I 
I don't really have a dad, so, you know. Jesus! <laughs> when you say stuff like that, you throw me off. I want a Sopranos movie set in the 60s with, 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 Uncle with Tony June. and Uncle uh, June yeah. going about like the fucking Godfather. They said they were going to do that. Get bloody uh, De Niro in there. Yeah. Get him back in a fucking gangster movie. Get him in there as whoever. Yeah. Do a Tony uh, do a Sopranos movie with the Sopranos in nineteen sixties in New York. <laughs> New York. Killing the fuck out of people. Yeah. Being gangsters. Give us this movie. Gangsters doing gangster shit. Exactly. Shit. I'm up for that. I'm yep. well up for that. Uh, I didn't even think of Sopranos. Totally honest, it did not dawn on me. You're right though, and they did talk for a long time that they were gonna do like a, a it was like a six episode spin off with like the early days. Nothing ever came of it. I think basically Gandolfini died. Yep. You wouldn't need Gandolfini in well, there. You don't need Tony's not there. I mean, I mean you can have him there as a kid, was, but it was mostly out of respect that they didn't didn't yeah, go there. Yeah. I like but to think, but the, the Sopranos is a franchise that is crying out for a for a revival. Hundred percent. And give us a movie. 100%. Before I go on to my number one, uh, I put it out there on the, the Facey Bee oh, right. and the and the Twitties, and we got some feedbacks. Ooh. Uh, Brigger. Mm-hmm. Again, like you said earlier, I'd like to think he was sleep deprived, but he wanted to see uh, King of Queens movie, mm-hmm. Kevin Can Wait, which mm-hmm. I think is the new Kevin James thing. It is. Two Broke Girls. Was that sleep deprived or was that an actual thing? I've seen trailers for it. I believe it's utter shite. Yeah, it's, it's, it's an actual show, but yeah. does he want to see a movie like that? Uh, I think he probably does. Probably. And Two and a Half Men. <laughs> <laughs> My only question there is, is that the Ashton Two and a Half Men or the um, the or, other one? Or the fucked up one. Yeah, it's the, the fucked up one. Allegedly. allegedly. Uh, Kev Wright, uh, he agreed, uh, 24. Mm-hmm. I quite like this list, as weird as it is. Still Game. Ooh, Still Game. Uh, the Flash with Grant Gustin instead. Oh, fuck yes. Yes. Phoenix Knights. Mm, okay, why not? Why not? And The Walking Dead. No. And he did say he would have said The Office, but it looks like this Brent movie is that. Anyway. That is pretty much The Office the movie. Yeah. I wouldn't. I don't think a Walking Dead movie would work. I don't. I don't see a Walking Dead movie. Still game. That. Fuck right. Fucking right. <laughs> Instead of a series. Um, well, they're making a series at the moment, I believe. Are they? It's coming out in the autumn or the fall. The if fa- you're more, if you're more looking. The fall. Yeah. So. Dev chimed in, mm-hmm. as he does, mm-hmm. and he said, nothing, as it would not be the same. Oh, fuck you, Dev. And I said, thank you very much, Dev. Good talk. And then Joe, D- Joe Keaton jumped in from another damn wrestling show. Did he say The Matrix? No. no. Did he say Fast and Furious? He said, I'm still smarting from not winning the 365 championship. He didn't say that. No, I put that in there. He said Gotham, and then he said Gotham, and then he said 24. And then he said Resurrection. Even though it was cancelled, it was awesome. I, I don't remember Fuck Resurrection. Resurrection. And then Dev chimed in and said, Gotham could only get better because it's hard to make it worse than the abortion it was. Oh, wow. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> that's, that's, that's Although Dev. basically, Gotham, isn't that just it's Batman. Batman, <laughs> Batman and Robin? Well, no, you could, make, you could make a Gotham movie before you ever became, and he doesn't become Batman. He's just constantly Bruce Wayne as a 15-year-old or something. Oh, Jesus Christ. Like, sitting in his room. No one's going to watch that. Nobody's going to watch that. Joe would watch that, apparently. Joe would watch that. He wouldn't watch The Matrix, though. No, has he not seen it? No. Oh, well. No. Um, but he loves his Fast and Furious. He does. He does, mm-hmm. so I've heard. The uh, the graphic novice number one fan, Doug, uh, said... <laughs> what? <laughs> That's his name. Uh, he said Hogan's Heroes. He only had one choice. He said Hogan's Heroes. What Hulk Hogan? I've I've no idea what it is. I think it's like an old thing. Uh, Doctor Number One jumped in, and I I really, <clears throat> I'm either really young or this is just all made up names. Uh, Manimal, that's a made up name, isn't it? Uh, uh, y- yep. That Manimal, Auto Man, Alf. That's not made up. I remember Alf. Alf is real. Captain Caveman. I'd watch that. And Wacky Races. Ooh, Wacky Races. Thing is, Wacky Although Wacky Races, Races was it's that pretty much been done. Rowan Atkinson movie. Yeah, that shitty movie you made. Why are we referencing mo- episodes we've done? We're, we're referencing we're, a lot of episodes we've we're, done. We're professional, that's what we do. Just pimping our shit out. Yeah. And Jeff from Hobie jumped on a minute ago and said Firefly. Technically, they made a movie Well, they that? did make a movie, Jeff, already. Come on. Keep up, son. All right. We could have Serenity 2. <laughs> or Firefly, uh, 
the official sequel to Serenity. My number one is HBO. Mm-hmm. It's cool how we both kind of went HBO because HBO makes it the. I would like to see, and bear with me, uh-huh. with the writer of the show uh-huh. and directing, I would like to see either Robert Redford or Kenneth Branagh. Mm-hmm. I would like to see a newsroom movie. I wow. Would, I would love to see a newsroom movie. Maybe go out of the newsroom. Have the cast, have have him be, but maybe put him in one of these, like, war zone situations. You know, like, Robert Redford is fucking really good for, like, Lambs for Lions, mm-hmm. Spy, or Lions for Lambs, uh, Spy Game. Just put him in one of those situations. I would fuck. I would, I would, I would love to see it. Yeah, I would love to see a newsroom movie. And I'm not <clears> ready to say goodbye to that character. Jeff Daniels in that show is awesome. I think that, from what I gather, that... The Americans don't really like that show. It doesn't seem to be taken too well because I think Sorkin just got a little bit too Sorkin. Do you think it was like, you know, the opening scene of the show was basically... Yeah, him, what, what makes America great. Yeah, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Yeah. Which, awesome. by the way, is one of the awesome. best monologues I've ever seen. Again, in our monologues do episode. Think, do you think... <laughs> yeah, exactly. Do you think maybe that's why, like, the Americans Possibly. don't like that? Possibly. I do think it's just because it's it's Sorkin being Sorkin. Like, they, they don't like him when he gets too clever or... They don't like him when he gets too sorkin'y. I love the newsroom. It is a movie that it would have to be done right. Like I say, you would need somebody like Redford or Branagh. You couldn't you couldn't just throw John Favreau in there. It's got you couldn't throw Michael Bay in there. Yeah. It's gotta be somebody with the chops to actually Fucking Michael Bay. Yeah. yeah. You know or even David David Fincher. He done the Facebook movie. Sure. That that ended sure. up being really better than I thought it was gonna be. I would. I just. I think I'm. I'm ready for a newsroom movie. I'm not ready to say goodbye to those. I was. You were only. And plus, ju- the finale was not great. It wasn't great because I think they just kind of. They didn't know how to end it. Yeah, and it's not an easy show to finish. Whereas you, you can have it where, like I say, he's kind of been taken out of the newsroom. Um, he's 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 away with what's her name, Mac. Is Mac. it Mac? He's away with Mac to like fucking I don't know Syria, to. Oof. He's away to Syria to like cover the the whole ISIS thing, and you could have uh, Dev Patel covering it over the internet thing because he had all the the web based stuff. He could be doing all that and sort of. Uh, I just I feel like this is. You this know what? Movie I, I would watch that. I would absolutely watch that. And then her with the crack and tits, who does the uh, the stock take and the stock market? Oh, bless her! You could have her in there. I w- I want all of them in there. What's her name again? Olivia Munn. Yep. I, I forget I, her name. I want that movie. I would watch that. Thank you. I would watch that. And I really... I didn't think you were going to take that one, but for a second I was scared. Do you have any honourable mentions? I do. Go I on t- then. I have two. Two? I do, I like yes. it. 24? So, no. Ooh. No. I'm going to go back to British. Ooh. Mm-hmm. The first one I would like to see is a Black Adder movie. I knew you were going to say that. I, I don't watch Black Adder, so I can't... I can't call You're going to have to do this. <laughs> you're gonna have to watch Black Adder. No, because you're getting your wish in the whole Doctor Who Th- Doctor Who thing. Doctor so. Who. But we'll talk about that in the next section. Yes, I've got, I've got, I've got the ones. <laughs> yep, I've got them. I've got them on, uh, all listed and stuff. We'll do that in the next section. <laughs> Which, by but the way, I'm going to be doing a review of Sharknado in a minute. Sharknado. <laughs> Sharknado. <laughs> is that just is that your way of getting through it? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, uh, I would like to see a Black Adder movie. Yep. Um, yeah, I think I think the last we saw of Black Adder was like, Black Adder goes f- no. They, they did one for the Millennium. Fuck me, that's sixteen years ago. Right. I think there's more to be told of Black Adder. It's a good character. They reinvented it of every on, on every different series. Yeah. I think there's a movie in there. You know that the the Ab Fab movie has just come out. Apparently, it's really good. And apparently, it's getting a sequel. Really? Apparently it's already Shit. slated for a sequel. You know what? Good honour. Right. It was written by Jennifer Saunders. Good honour. Uh, it's another It's another British comedy genius. Yeah. You know, there's no denying this. I never watched a lot of it, but from what I did watch, it is funny as balls. So, so yeah, good honour. It's getting it's getting good reviews. Um, so, fucking get a Blackadder movie made. Yeah, so I'm, I'm up for that. The other one I had, which kind of takes us back... Or, or have you got any before I do this one? I've got a couple. Because this is going to wrap it up nicely, do you see? <laughs> I had Lost, mm-hmm. purely because I love Lost, and if you're going to make a movie, I'm going to watch it. Uh, I went for Freaks and Geeks, remember, the uh, with Dave Franco and uh, Seth Rogen? 
It's like a high school thing back in the day. They were all like weed smokers. Quite a good film. Quite a good TV show. I don't remember this. Uh, it was like Judd Apatow created and directed and produced. and. But basically, I just want to see them two in another movie together. Okay. Keenan and Kel. Because <laughs> <laughs> why no not? sister, sister? I know that was literally... You're not going to hope you with sister, sister? I'll put sister, sister in good there. Good lad. I know Keenan and Kel movie was literally Good Burger, but I want a Keenan and Kel movie. <laughs> and the last one was another one that already had a movie and then a TV show that I fucking adored and I'd like to see another movie. It's Friday Night Lights. Yeah, no, I've never watched that. Yeah, you yeah, should. I started watching it. I watched like two episodes and then I kind of didn't. It is very like Texas... I loved it. I can't even say that because I love the balls of that program. I was fucking greeting every episode. Oh, yeah. Just to wrap up, this whole little cheeky bit is Game of Thrones. <laughs> okay. We're only getting seven episodes next year. Yeah. Six episodes in 2018. I don't know where George R.R. R. Martin, or whatever the fuck his name is, George R. R. Martin, is going with it. Yeah. I assume he's told them, right, you've got, this is what, this is where I want to end up. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is what's going to happen in the end. So the writers are kind of have to wing. Uh, they're kind of winging it right now. So you've only got thirteen hours in which to tell the end of this story. Yep. You know. So why not? Why fucking not do your th- thirteen episodes mm-hmm. and then end it in a movie? But is Game of Thrones not that? Is it not the series that is actually putting episodes in IMAX now? Is it? I'm sure there's a TV. I think it is Game of Thrones. Like they're showing. Uh, episodes of the series, like the premiere, usually or the finale, they show them in IMAX cinemas. Could you not like if you're only getting thirteen episodes? Could you not do like eleven episodes, and then the last two is just a movie? Could you not do that? Oh, I didn't uh, even know that was a thing. Yeah, it's a thing. So, so that was the top five. Yeah. Would you like to move on to this? Yes, I, I really, really would. Would you? Yeah. Before we do. I'm going to play a quick promo, but when we come back, I am going to be giving my thoughts, feelings, and reviews of Sharknado. <laughs> and before we go into it, a little bit of a spoiler, it probably won't take that long. I have come here to chew bubblegum and kick ass. And I'm all out of bubblegum! Astro Radio Z is a horror, cult, exploitation film podcast hosted by me, Derek Carey. I was one of those monster kids growing up. The one that used to sit in the back end of that video store and scour over every single last film cover you saw back there. From the slashers, to the monsters, to the sleazy stuff. Yeah, I was freaking obsessed. And I still am. So much so, I became a filmmaker myself. Now I bring on all my filmmaker friends, critics, musicians, and any other fans of the dark arts, which are horror, exploitation, and cult film. Are you one of these people? Then tune in and listen to my show, Astro Radio Z. Yeah. I love that problem. I do like that. We see this every episode. Let's just stop saying it. So, Chris. Yes, Kevin. Congratulations on winning the 365 title. Thank you very much. Hit my music? No. <laughs> Not just now. <laughs> Fuck you. Bye. Um, you, um, yeah, you recommended, nominated, um, made me watch a movie. Yep. Would you like to tell the good people who are listening uh, what that movie was? So, yeah, because because Kev gave me a movie that he loved, I didn't enjoy it, but he enjoyed it. Fair enough. I'll not quibble. The movie was Turbo Kid. Mm-hmm. So I decided I would get Kev back. Um... Get me back. Yep. Kev had to watch Sharknado. I gave you a 4.5 movie. You didn't. To be fair, I did, though. The nerd and nerd said no. so. Well, fuck nerd on nerd. <gasps> allegedly. <clears throat> no. Not allegedly. <laughs> Not allegedly. <laughs> it, was, it was fucking ridiculous. Turbo Kid's awesome. Nope. So, yeah. We're we'll never so, getting that interview. <laughs> how did you get on with Sharknado? Sharknado or shark Sharknado. 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 So, yeah. Um... <sighs> I had no idea what I was sitting down to. I've, I've seen all the hubbub and I've seen all the fuss with this movie. You know what, love it. 
I know you love it. There seems to be a corner of the internet that fucking loves this movie. Mm-hmm. So much so that they're actually releasing the fourth movie soon, which is... Yes, they are. Like, it'll be... Uh, it's normally July it comes out. After watching this movie, I cannot understand how this got to four. <laughs> this is... This is like... This is some next level bullshit. I love the room. Like we we are in some serious B B movie territory here. By the way, Th- this is like if is, if there was a level below B movie, the, this is where this sits for me. Oh man, ah, uh, <sighs> Turbo Kid is in is an indie low budget movie that has cult status, and it, and I loved it. Uh, the room is like is an indie movie with cult status that I love. The Sharknado. Oh my god. So yeah. Um. Oh fuck me. This was a hard watch. This was a very very hard watch. Oh, uh, that's awesome. Right. I, I had to take notes because literally my mind was just. So, have I gotten you back for a biodome? Oh, close. Very very close. Wow. I felt like my. I felt like I was brain farting right the way through this movie. Like. I just did not know what. Ah, oh, man. So yeah, the movie uh, opens up. If you if you haven't seen it, I'm. I'll give. I'll be. I'll be giving <laughs> as many spoilers as I can give. From from what was going on, because um, this movie just kind of starts um, in the middle of uh, a Sharknado is already in a full effect. There's like um, there's a boat in the middle of the sea, and there's like the oh god, the captain of the boat goes down below, and there's like a Chinese man with a briefcase, and he wants something. I I'm not entirely sure what it was. Do you remember? I can't remember. And he goes outside and there's a massive... There's a fucking hurricane outside. Um, yeah, there's a twister. And there's a dozen sharks inside it. And there's like... The fucking CG in this movie, man. The fucking effects of... Oh, nah. You know, if if you can't make it, you, you fake it. And they, they fake the fucking balls out of this. Just the sharks in the sea. There was like a million sharks in the sea. Like it was just pure crappy CG all over, man. You know how you know how with uh, the making of Jaws, yeah, um, they couldn't get Bruce the Shark to work, <laughs> right? So, and that that's what made the legend of yep. Jaws. Yeah, is they couldn't get the they couldn't get the mechanical shark to work, so they ended up doing the minimal. You know that yeah. you know, like you know, like you say, what you what you can't see is what's scary and all that mm-hmm. kind of thing. It builds up the tension. It builds up the drama. This movie did not have that. It had no tension, no, no <laughs> drama. It threw the fucking kitchen sink in there. Like, there, there was like a million sharks in the sea. Every time the camera focused on the fake-ass fucking shit water, which was so goddamn fake, it was unbelievable. There were sharks everywhere. It was like a million sharks in the sea. And I'm sitting there going, I wouldn't have minded if it was like one or two sharks flying about, but nah, there's like... Uh, what if it's a, like a really big school of sharks? So, uh, fuck. That could happen. It, no, it's whatever. <laughs> so yeah, my um, first note is You've that... You've seen Discovery Channel, right? My first note is how bad the CG was, but I'm I'm not surprised because... It's, it's a, a sci-fi channel it's, movie. It's a sci-fi channel movie, so I knew it wasn't going to be up to much. Shit, was that right? And then, um, so top credit goes to Tara Reid. Top credit in this movie. Movie opens. Tara Reid. And then Ian Zerling comes on after that. And I'm sitting there thinking, I don't think that's ever happened. I don't think Tara Reid's ever been top credit. Plus, she's fucking crap in this movie. <laughs> oh. Well, you should see the sequels, my friend. <laughs> Just um, challenge for the, the title and then we'll see what we can do there. So, I- Ian Zerling um, is a surfer called Finn. Finn, people. That, that really... Is that meant to get a chuckle out of me? All right, Jack Shepard. They have John Hurd fucking... What was John Hurd doing in this? John Hurd is actually quite oh, a he rep. he plays like the creepy... He's sort a of, pervert. He cre- like, creepy alcoholic fella, he's, he? he's an yeah. alky. He's slapping the girl on the arse. He's like making innuendos and, and then he gets eaten by a shark. Fuck me. Everybody gets eaten by a shark. The fucking sharks. Uh, there's a lot of shark cam. Um, camera point of views... From the shark's perspective, which mm-hmm. I was in, in the sea, right in a fucking. <laughs> this was actually quite good. I did like this. It kind of kept. They were like on the freeway sort of thing, and the water was like I don't know, maybe knee high. Yep. You know, and then the camera would go to the shark, and it looked like it was in the fucking ocean. And I'm just sat there going, really? Like, there's no road or anything. There's no. It's just. Uh, 
<laughs> whoever they pay, whoever they paid for the CG, they need to get that money back. Uh, there was a line um, where they said that sharks don't like Vegemite, but that's not the only line in this movie that made me go, "Fuck oh, a bet, nah. yep. Like, I, like I felt like I was out. Sharks are being driven to the bay by the storm. Like the the big things. Like I d- I didn't mind this, but I was semi sort of in at this bit. You know when the girls are paddling or something like that, and then the shark like bites at, and then all they all run down to the the seafront to get them and try and help them. Mm-hmm. I'm sitting there thinking, okay, like this the storm, the swirling storm would probably push them into the shallows because you know Blake Lively, and I'm sitting there thinking, like I'm buying this, I'm okay with this, and then it just gets utterly fucking stupid. He's, <laughs> yep. They um, they tend to talk about global warming quite a bit. Like on the news, which kind of like is that their way of like sci-fi trying to, you know, classy the movie up a little bit? I don't remember that, but it wasn't working. Yeah, they're probably trying to be political. So, um, in the hall was Hobie says. Ta- Tara Reid is an asshole in this movie. She is a that that is, yeah. a, that is an actual note. She that is I a made. massive asshole. <laughs> yep. And he's all like, "Why the fuck?" Like that that girl that works for him proper fancies the balls off him, right? And she has no idea that he has an ex-wife or or an estranged wife. She has no idea that he has a daughter. She has, and the daughter's like not even half his age. The daughter like looks practically his age. Like the do- the daughter comes out, and I was expecting like a twelve year old. And the daughter comes out, and it's a pretty fucking stunning like seventeen, eighteen year old. And I'm sitting there going, "Really, Tara Reid and him pumped that out? No, no thanks." And then she doesn't even know that he's got a son, which I nearly missed. But I'll get to that. They stole the death from Jaws. There's literally a scene where they throw an oxygen tank into a shark's mouth and blow its fucking head off. But, but... <laughs> but what? Hold on a wee minute, because a lot of what these movies are doing are callbacks and are homages. This movie has no right doing of anything like that. Of course it does. It, no, it doesn't. You're making a monster shark movie. This movie is not airplane. Okay. You know, fucking Piranha 3D had fucking um, Hooper in a dinghy at the start going show me the way to I'm go right home that. I'm alright that. that's a homage to Jaws so, they, they so st- how can how can how is it okay for Piranha to do that and for them for Cause Piranha's, the guys who are making a shark movie because Piranha is actually semi fucking decent <laughs> you know it's an or, or Sharknado, Sharknado is beyond decent it's, it's sh- Piranha is quite li- literally a legitimate movie this so a Sharknado fuck this <laughs> uh, John Heard. Uh, oh, I, I said that. I've so got my own back from just Iodome. just before John Heard died. Yep. I realised something. He is quite literally sleeping his way through this movie. He's asleep in just about every scene, apart from the opening scene in the bar. And then you get another scene when uh, Finn Finn comes in, and John Heard is asleep at the bar. And then they wake him up, and they go out and they and they jaws the shark, and then they get in the the car and they drive up the freeway with the fucking water. That's like. An inch high off the ground, uh, and that. Did they say, "Smile, you son of a bitch"? Yes. And when when he's when he's in the back of the car, he's literally sleeping again. He wakes up to die. John Heard, ladies and gentlemen. And I literally, my next note was, "Fuck me." Yeah, the wife's new husband is a complete and utter fucking dick. Tara Reed's husband is a dick, but then so's Tara Reed in this movie. So yeah. you know, needs must. In the middle of the movie, there's a school bus rescue for quite literally no reason whatsoever. Just because Finn's a good fucking guy. Pish. He he, he quite literally puts himself in absolute harm's way. He's the hero. He's a dick. And he he repels from the bridge onto the bus. And there's like 20 people in this bus. It's not like he goes down and saves two people. He saves 20 people. And you get this beautiful scene where they're all stood on on the bridge at the end of this little scene. This literally takes them like an hour away. Like they're nearly at their destination. It takes them an hour to save all these fucking no names. It's just pointless. He's the hero. And then, and then is it the bus driver? I'm sure it's the bus driver. Gets hit by the Hollywood sign. Someone's got to get hit by the Hollywood sign. Things got a little bit hazy around, around about this point in time because my next note is I think I fell asleep for a minute. They're trying to throw canister bombs into the tornadoes. Oh yeah. Because they're gonna, that's their way to reverse the polarity or whatever. Right, so what I took from that was I woke up and I missed them finding his son. 
Because his son was flying the helicopter. Yeah, I believe his son is a pilot. Yeah. Because because <laughs> movies. Because <laughs> yeah. why the fuck not? And Finn can fly just about fucking anything as well. And drive anything. Because it's Finn. Well, yeah. And he's a badass. Somebody said that at the start of the movie. Finn's a badass. Yeah, so they're throwing like canister bombs in the middle of a fucking tornado. Because it's going <laughs> to... And, and it evaporates them. It's going to disrupt the tornado? I don't know what you've got. Do you not have a problem with this movie? Like, CG-wise and special effects-wise? Absolutely not. This movie was, like, being stabbed in the fucking eyeballs, like, quite a few times. Luckily, I fell asleep and missed a bit of it. I don't think I missed much, though. I wish I'd I'd stayed asleep through this bit. We're pretty much at the end of the movie now. They they do the thing with the canisters when they they're throwing the um the canisters into the 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 shark and um the the girl who fancies the balls out of him she falls out of the helicopter into a shark's mouth, obviously. Well, yeah. So, so that's her. Um, <laughs> Happens every day. That's her. We think dead. Oh, oh man. <laughs> the hero of the movie. <laughs> Whose name is Finn, uh, played by Ian Zerling, who, you know, I'm sh- I'm sure he's done things that aren't as fucking shite as this, and he probably thinks that he had a career at some point. He quite literally runs at a shark and jumps into the shark in with, its, in with its a mouth. Chainsaw? With a chainsaw? With a chainsaw, because then, from the inside of this fucking shark, he chainsaws his way out of it, and then pulls her... What I assumed was dead body, but I don't think it is because I think they, they like resuscitate her or some shit like that. Yeah, that shit happens in Zelda, not in movies, not in fuck. Like you know, in Zelda, when you went in that big fish and there was the spiders in the different cabins, that's a game. This is a fucking movie. I can't think of uh, anaconda, but the ana- the snake, <laughs> the snake spits him back out and he winks at the person and then he dies. That's yeah. badass. He jumps into a fucking shark. Yeah, because it's. A movie because yeah. you don't you can't just keep saying it's a movie because see when this movie came out people took to Twitter and they were fucking trending this bullshit worldwide it was a fucking phenomena when this movie came out I've avoided it for all these years you've made me watch it and I quite literally felt like hanging myself to you I'm glad I fell asleep because uh, it's probably for the best of anything and that's literally the end of the movie like I'm not going to get too spoilery because I fucking can't it was just it was a mess this, it, just char- just uh, Zary Ger Tari Ger hand chopped off or not no that's um, <laughs> is that Sharknado 2 funnily enough I watched the first 20 minutes of Sharknado 2 after watching this because I thought you know what people still love these movies and they, they keep churning them out so it must get better it doesn't it does. It doesn't. It does. Because, and I'll tell you why in two minutes, once once I get my last note, right? The end credits of this movie has an original song about being eaten by sharks. We're going to be killed by a sharknado. A sharknado, we're going to be killed by a sharknado. <sighs> who, who do you... Who do you legitimately oh, pay man. to make that song? We're going to be eaten by... Sh- and it wasn't, it wasn't the Backstreet Boys. Justin Bieber? Oh man, this movie fucking sucked. I like a bad movie. There are people on other podcasts, Anthony from the Jock and Nerd, who knows that I like a bad movie and I I can defend a bad movie. You know, Mac and me love it. The Room, love it. Um, just bad movies. I do like them because I'm a film Turbo f- kid. Turbo kid. I am a film fan. I can appreciate a film for what it is. This to me is not a movie. It's about ninety minutes. Of fucking terrible CGI, a million trillion fucking sharks getting into situation. There's a scene in a house. The house is flooded, but when they go outside, it's like it's like a fucking inch high off the ground. So why is the house flooded? What? How can a shark be in the house swimming around eating people when they go outside? And there's no. Oh, man. <laughs> he cried again. If I didn't, <laughs> if, if I didn't fall asleep for what I assume was a good five to ten minutes, I, I would have ended it. So what? Everything, everything, <laughs> everything, everything. Because this movie was just—it's not even a movie. It's not. Somebody put money into this. People put money into this. This got distributed and and put into the world as a movie. You know, 
I get it. Sci-fi, they do what they do. You've got all these other movies like Lava, Lava Ranchula, um, fucking Jurassic Shark. You got all these movies out there that people genuinely are loving, but Sharknado seems to be the one that is like a cut above the rest, a fucking cut above. There's been like a kind of. Do you actually like this movie? Do I you, love the do movie. You, do you? I actually love the movie. There's been a sort of renaissance, if you if you want to call it's it. It's not a renaissance. Of B movies on, even, on sci-fi, it, I would not even call this a B movie. You you've got like Sharktopus, yeah, and bloody Robo, no Robo Croc, and you know it, just just fucking loads of them. Yeah, there's loads of them. And I actually back in the day when we had the the old website, I actually wrote a big you sort did of yes thing about that. Remember? I know, I know, I know you didn't enjoy it. But that was kind of the point of giving it to you. That's not the word. Nope. So, but what I would say to you is just, just, just fucking relax. It, they know they're making a bad movie. I relaxed very much into this movie. It's a sci-fi movie. It's not Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross. I wasn't expecting that. You know, it's not Jaws. It's a sci-fi movie. It's a shitty B movie. They know they've not got the best actors in the world or anywhere close to that. Tara Reid for fuck's sake they know they've not got the best actors they know they've got not got the best fucking CGI oh come on oh. they know they've, they've got nowhere close to the CGI of fucking Transformers or fucking any of that shit but one of the things that I, I wrote in that thing was that these the, the guys that are making this movie it's just they're basically fucking Michael Bay with the bud, without the budget they know the that's the B-movie, Kev. You've got to embrace the B-movie. I like B-movies. You know I like B-movies. This is... <laughs> I don't... <laughs> I don't know what this is. Oh, man, this is so cool. But it's just... It's a B-movie. It's a... You know, it's a shitty B-movie. And you've got... To, you can't go into these B-movies expecting to see the Deep Blue Sea or the Shallows or fucking Jaws or whatever. You've got to go into these B-movies... With a fucking beer in your hand and several more in the beer fridge next to you, and 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 you've got to realise that it's a fucking shit movie, and just embrace <laughs> that. Just how go can, with it. How can you love this movie? I fucking like, love those how movies. Can, how can you I love, love these that movies? Movie and, and I'll like be a, a fucking last year, twenty fifteen, Sharknado three. I watched it live. You'll be fucking live tweeting Sharknado four, mm-hmm. won't you? You suck. You absolutely. I'll be suck. watching it live. You absolutely suck. No, I don't recommend this movie to anybody. Um, I don't thank you for getting me to watch it. I went. I, I could have went the rest of my life without seeing this. And like I say, I did watch like the first 15, 20 minutes of, of <laughs> Sharknado 2. And my fucking God, they were ripping off Airplane left, right and centre. Left, to, right down oh, to the... Oh, shit. They have, they, don't they have um, Kelly Osborne? Like, yes. Yep. And right. Jedward. Was that... I, that, they, I, I never saw them. Right, okay. But there is literally a line when it goes to the cockpit where the pilot turns around to the co-pilot and says, what did you have for tea? And she says, chicken or fish. And he goes, yes, I had the chicken. Which is a line from fucking Airplane. When when, she, when he says, what what was the choice for tea? And she goes, fish or, fish or chicken? And he goes, I remember, I had lasagna. That's funny as balls in Airplane. Sharknado 2 has no right fucking doing this. And then the shark hits the plane and he's like, there's a shark on the wing. What the motherfucking shit? People love these movies. People love these movies. I can't wait to see the next one. I genuinely can't wait to see the next one. I'm not watching it. I think you should. I won't be watching anymore. And you can fuck you. Well done, winning the belt. Fuck you. (laughs) Okay. That is like the worst fucking possible movie you could have gave me. My entire title reign has been justified now. Well, no, it's not, because when I win it back, I'm going to find an absolute fucking cocker. Or you could you could challenge me, and then when I when I defend my title, I can give you Sharknado 2. I'm going to wait for Brigger to beat you. I'll see. And then I'm going to take off Brigger so that I don't have to watch Sharknado 2. <laughs> so, yeah. Is that Sharknado? That is Sharknado. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Sharknado. So, you um, put a little, a little thing out on the Facebook... For me to answer, yes, I did, and I, I said yes. 
Well, you know, we did, we did the. Uh, this is England retrospective, mm-hmm. and we both had a fucking absolute blast of a time. People seem to have yeah. responded to it very, very well, which I've, is I've, awesome. I've Again, had a, lot, a lot of feedback. Off uh, that. You know, from what, what 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 we said at the start of the episode tonight. Uh, thank you so bloody much yeah, to everyone. Man, yeah. Definitely. So people have responded very, very well to the This Is England episode. Um, so, yeah, I had an idea to myself. And I said to you, why don't we do another retrospective of, an, of another British yeah. show? And so after I had a few ciders, <laughs> I said to you, Doctor Who. Yep. I'm still quite shocked that you didn't go... Fuck that. <laughs> so you have actually, to your to your eternal credit, you've actually kind of agreed to take this challenge on board. Yeah, why not? I'll do anything for the podcast. I love I, I love doing this with you. I love having a bit crack. And if nothing else, this podcast is here to to get our thoughts and feelings out on things we love, things we don't love, and things we haven't yet seen. So I've never seen a great deal of Doctor Who. Fair some enough. bits and pieces here and there, so why not give it a crack? And yeah. talking to Kevin a couple of episodes back, kind of got me into the comic books, I'm liking what he's doing with that, so I thought, why the fuck not? Let, let's let's watch some Doctor Who. Fair enough. Okay. okay. I, I am still so, a little bit like, what the fuck's going to happen? I was going <laughs> to I was gonna give you, um, uh, we were speaking to a fella on, on the Twitters, I c- yeah. I can't remember who, um, and I kind of thought, I'll, like, I'll give you the... The story arc with the master John Sim, mm-hmm. or I'll give you the story arc with uh, with Davros. But then I was saying to you the other night, you know, you're not a Doctor Who fan, no. like you, you've you've not watched Doctor Who from no, like you know, like the last couple of years I, or whatever. I saw like I think I saw like the the season with Christopher Eccleston. Yeah, he only did one, and I saw all of that, and I never saw anything past yeah. it. Yeah, so I then figured. Because of that, because of that reason, um, giving you a, a multi-story arc Ooh. isn't oh. isn't the best way to go. Okay. Because you're going to be, like, say, with the Stolen Earth one, uh, where Daphros comes back, he's the leader of the Daleks, you're going to be saying, well, why is Rose Tyler there, and why is Donna Noble there, and all that kind of thing. What's a Dalek? Shut up. <laughs> um, so instead I'm, of that... By the way, I know what a Dalek is, because Ian McNeese told me. Okay. Um, <laughs> so instead of that... What I, what I sort of thought was we'll do instead of a, a the, the three story multi arc thingy Bobby yeah um, that I had in my mind we'll do th- three standalone stories uh, so I've got two standalone forty five minute episodes cool and a standalone double bill cool because Doctor Who is famous for its double bills <laughs> so you, if you're going to experience Doctor Who you've got to have a dub- have, a, have a double bill okay. So, as I said before, in my top five, David Tennant is probably the most accessible doctor for people. Yep. Um, so I stuck with I stuck with David Tennant. Um, so I've got three episodes for you. Well, I've, yeah, I've got two forty-five minute episodes and a double bill. The first one is an episode from season two or series two, and it's an episode set in the nineteen fifties or sixties, Britain. It's called The Idiot's Lantern. Right. Okay. It's uh, Rose Tyler is the, is, is the companion. Mm-hmm. Uh, they go back to the, I think it's the 1960s. It's the coronation of the Queen. Mm-hmm. So that would be 50s. I like time travel. You think? Like so they go back and as always, what, you know, what happens with Doctor Who, there's something amiss. Yeah. As always happens with any time travel. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> um, it's a very, very good episode. It's got a great cast in it. I think I think I think you'll enjoy this one. Um the next one is the double bill. <laughs> and it's uh not Rose Tyler in this one, it's Martha. Martha Exactly. Sons of Martha So the double bill is from series three, it's episodes eight and nine. Right. And it's uh, the episode names are Human Nature and Family of Blood. Ooh. And basically the premise of this one is it's a standalone double bill. The The Doctor and Martha are being chased by aliens who want to harvest the, the Time Lord. Mm-hmm. So if they get hold of the Doctor, they can harvest the Time Lord and use his, his like energy to, to sort of take over the universe kind of thing. Right. So they have to go into hiding. 
And you love this shit way too much. I know I do. They have to go into, <laughs> so they have to go into hiding. It's another time travel one. So they mm-hmm. go into hiding in 1913. <sighs> so it's the year before the First World War begins. Oh, sh- current. <laughs> current. Sort of current. Um, current. Um, shut up. <laughs> so the doctor has to disguise his identity. Otherwise, the family of blood will uh, realise who he is. And then they'll capture him and, and uh, they'll be able to harvest the time lord Mm -hmm. so martha knows who the doctor is the doctor doesn't know who he is so martha is trying to sort of keep him safe and david tennant does some of the best acting i've ever seen he's good i like david tennant so yeah third one (laughs) third one is another uh sort of 45 minute episode um it's from series four and it's called midnight and it's like a it's kind of like a thriller okay Right, um, basically, the the doctor is in like a they're on like a planet called the planet is called Midnight, and it's like a diamond planet. Right. So the doctor is on like a sort of excursion. You, you'll realize you'll like Colin Morgan is in the episode who played Merlin. Okay. okay. Uh, there there are other people in in the thing. So it's basically it's like a sort of compact episode. They're all in this in this like it's like it's like a sort of I guess like a boss. Right. Sort of thing. They're travelling across the planet. Again, something goes wrong. <laughs> it's a very, very creepy episode. Oh, well, I don't want to be, like, hiding behind my couch. Oh, you'll be hiding behind your couch in this one. Oh, um, because there, there's a, a moment in the episode where, like, the, the doctor sort of... There's something... Cu- the, the, the bus thing breaks down, um, and it comes towards the bus. The, the alien entity thing comes towards the bus. Like, there's a moment where the doctor goes, like... And the thing goes, and it's creepy as fuck. <laughs> it is creepy as fuck. It's so good. And I'll not give you any spoilers, but that's <laughs> your third episode. Okay. I'm going to be sick of Doctor Who, ain't I? No. I'm going to be all like, what no. am I watching? It's better than Sharnado. <laughs> Couldn't be worse, Christ. I think uh, I think Big Dev probably likes Sharknado above Gotham. Fuck's sake. Oh, fuck off. <laughs> So there you go. That's so there you go. That, that's what I'll do. I will watch them for probably the next episode, whenever that is, and because uh, you know, T man, you, you've T-man got a little icon on the way. So, oh. so if if we're not out, if we're not talking to you in the next, you know, two or three weeks, ah, for, we will be. Forgive us. We'll, we will be. It'll be fine. We you know. will be. I've got that shit covered. I'll just bring the Ben in here, and we'll just put, oh, it, put it in the Moses basket at the back. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Yeah. People will just get the baby experience on the podcast. He or she is going to be a future podcaster. So exactly. Start them young. Exactly. So that's been episode 43. Yeah. You think? Just end it there? That's pretty much it, yeah. I don't think we've need got anything else to, to, to go on about. I think we've, I've done quite all right, seeing I was pissed when I started yeah, the episode. We've, uh, we've probably sobered you up with our shit pat, I like. But. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, that's us. Um, again... Just, I just want to echo everything uh, Chris said earlier. Like, thank you. You've all really take people have taken to the episodes. Um, people have taken to the podcast as it is. Uh, we will strive to bring you better content. Uh, well, 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 there's a limit. We'll half ass it, but you, you might get something better. <laughs> I don't know. Um, this is what we do. Uh, we're on the iTunes. We're on the Stitcher. We're on the Androids. We're on the Googles. We're just look for the Three Six Five Flux podcast. You will find us. We're all over the damn place. And I would just like to say goodbye. And Chris, would you like to say goodbye? To me. <sighs> really? Okay, goodbye. Do you have to? Sorry. You just bring the fucking show down. Oh, hear my music! I think I'm cute. I know I'm sexy. I've got the look that drives the girls wild. I've got the mood that really moves them. I said chill up and down their spine. I'm just a sexy boy. Sexy boy. I'm not your boy, boy. That's definitely my theme tune. Yep. Yep. So you're when, not, I'm, when I'm walking home in a minute, pissed. So um, you're not going to change it to Ah, oh, here it goes. No, no. Do, do, do. I wasn't happy with that, by the way. What? Don't be sending me videos with people saying, Is that going to be a new theme tune? All right? Keenan and Kel, if that's going to be anybody's theme tune, mine. You, yours would be sister, sister, yeah, sister, sister. Was it on the list? On what list? On the thing uh, on the Android box. Was not? No, sister, sister was it on there? Surely. And Ducktales was on there. 
Look so, at the only, like, bloody, they had Thundercats and He-Man and she and fucking, like, bloody Dog Tanyan and Banana Man and no DuckTales <laughs> and no sister smacking the fucking sister. <laughs> uh, I'm going to end the recording now because oh, shit. I, I want to play some, uh, some retro games. Ooh. I think I'm cute. I know I'm sexy. I've got the looks that drives the girls wild. I've got the moves.